Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of NPTEL, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the principals, SPOCs, mentors, professors, IIT Madras faculty, my colleagues, friends, and all the other representatives who have gathered here. Last December, I stood be before you saying that we have over 150 local chapters. In the last six months, these numbers have more than doubled. Today, I can proudly stand before you and share that we have more than 500 local chapters. This is indeed, thank you. This is indeed a very proud moment for all of us. I would like to share some statistics with you. Uh, till date, we have completed nine exam runs and we have completed about 122 courses. In these runs, we have given out 12,000 and more uh, scholarships and um, the number of candidates who has been certified is 28,000 plus. We, we appreciate the wonderful efforts put in by the principals, the SPOCs and mentors of each college and for joining hands with us and making Nipitil local chapter such a huge success. Thank you so much. And none of this could have materialized without your help. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you. We hope to continue to work with you and ensure that online education reaches every student and every individual who has a thirst for knowledge. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to invite Professor Mangal Sundar to come and welcome our guests. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kamala. Good morning. Uh, I mean, all I can do is to say thank you for every effort and the wonderful organizational and reach of the NPTEL team. I must tell you, in 1999, we had no idea where we would be. <laughs> That's when this whole thing started. And uh, it is really nice to recall that you, there are 500 institutions which have expressed direct participatory interest, not merely observational interest. You know, when we had distributed the course materials earlier, many, many institutions were interested. But now we have many organizations directly participating in it. And that's a wonderful sign for good things to come in India. First of all, I want to thank my own colleague, Professor Andrew, Andrew Tangaraj, the Department of Electrical Engineering, Professor Pratap Haridas, uh, Department of Metallurgical Sciences and Engineering, and the NPTEL principal uh, administrative team headed by Mrs. Uh, Bharati Balaji, here Kamala who just spoke to you before, and many others and the whole team of NPTEL for ensuring the continuity and the rocket speed with which things should happen when some of us were involved in the earlier design of NPTEL. So it is, it is through them that we have been able to get all of you here and also share your experiences, your expectations, and the value additions that you would like to bring in to this project. Please see that this is the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. It doesn't have any institution by identity. Okay? Everybody in this country, in this nation, is welcome to be a partner. That's it. Maybe IITs are coordinating, maybe some other institution would like to coordinate this later, but it's a national effort, which means every one of us would contribute to it as voluntarily and as sincerely as we can to ensure that the next generation of students as well as the current generation of students benefit from the whole process. And many of us as individuals also stand to benefit because we get to learn from our colleagues in parallel because very often you and your colleagues teach at the same time and therefore you have very little time to see what the other person is teaching. Now NPTEL provides you the basis to go back and look at what your colleagues would have said and what you wanted to learn from them. And this has happened to me. Yeah. 
This has happened to me many, many times because when I need to look into a particular concept, few years from now, instead of typing Google, I think you should type NPTEL to find out that a particular concept is, is there or not. I think that's what we would like all of you to do. It's not that Google is, I mean, it's not providing. I think we should raise our level to that bar. That is the bar to which we want to reach. That, I think that's the idea. And therefore, it means every, everything and everybody's contribution is important in that process. Now, I just put up a first page. Some of you might have read the couple of lines, but let me still put that up. This is uh, an article that I am summarizing for another international agency, so hopefully uh, it will get published in the next few months and I will make certain that it's available to everybody on the internet. Let me just see if I can, no, sorry, control Z, okay, so I need to increase the font size which is somewhere down here I guess, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, something I have been taught as a school or a college student. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. This is a beautiful poem by Robert Frost, uh, entitled Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. The last line is important. I think that's what we are all here for. We have tens of thousands of miles to go before we can sleep. And remember there are, at this point of time, two and a half crore students who are in the higher education and about two times, sorry, about four times that in the high school education. In engineering, we have about four and a half million, which is about 16 to 18 percent of the total student population in the world, in, in India, total student population in India. Four and a half million engineering students and about 16 million students in arts and sciences. This is what was the number given by the UGC, University Grants Commission, in 2013. And uh, all predictions are that the demographical advantage that we have in terms of the average age of India actually going down as you are becoming older. It is surprising that the average age of India is still going down. The youth is going to be the strongest component of this country for the next 20 years or 30 years. And that must be due to the spectacular failure of the Indian policy of uh, uh, population control. <laughs> in the 1970s and 80s. You know, we failed miserably in the population control policy and China was absolutely successful in the uh, population control policy. And the result of that is 40 years later, the demographical advantage is with us and not with China. So please understand that we have a great country and a great many student population that we have to actually help and do that without asking for anything in return. And NPTEL has always been from day one and until today has been a social service and if there are charges involved for running exams and other things, these are incidental charges to ensure that the government is not overtaxed in running a project. The government is already handing over a substantial fund to support NPTEL and NPTEL-like activities in many others and therefore, you see, we have promises to keep and we can't sleep until those promises are fulfilled. There's a lot of stories about this and I know I have got just about five more minutes to tell you a little bit about where all of this started. I mean, when, whenever you have assembled here in sufficient numbers, I would also like to point out that this started with a person from this institute, Professor M. S. Anand who was then a professor of chemical engineering and was the dean of uh, students as well as partly uh, dean of academic research. It was Professor M. S. Anand in 1999, along with Professor uh, colleagues, Professor Nadrajan here and Professor 
Paul Goodman of Carnegie Mellon University, Pittsburgh. They sat together and involved me at that point of time to discuss a workshop on NPTEL. No, they didn't call it NPTEL. They wanted a technology enhanced learning workshop. Most of you would see technology enabled learning as a common phrase anywhere in the world. But technology enhanced learning was a phrase was, that was used by Professor Paul Goodman, who was a cognitive psychologist. And he was always interested in cognitive learning, not merely learning through better communication and better methods of communication. I mean, that he said would automatically happen in any society when the communication tools improve. Learning will automatically adopt to that. But cognition is something that depended on the teachers, that depended on the, the social requirements of the learners. And therefore, cognition was more an intellectual and mind and brain driven processes. And technology should enhance the learning process by inventing means and methods. This was the original idea. And therefore, we adopted the name National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning to say that technology enabling will automatically happen as technologies come in, as communication methods come in, and so on. So uh, that was 1999. And in 2016, to come back and think about that, we have a little more than 1,100 courses. And we are moving towards another 100 courses to be offered as certification. It's a long journey. But please remember, no long journey is long enough. The journey has now started taking up the speed. And therefore, it's very, very important that you have an active participation in the meeting today. And you tell us what are all the difficulties that you face, what are all the solutions that you have in your local environment that would fit in with the global requirement for NPTEL as a project and as a program. So please keep this in mind. You are here to tell us and contribute to us. It's not that you are here to come and learn. That's part of the process. All of us learn from each other. Therefore, please give us all the inputs that you would like to. And please go back and inform your nearby college colleagues and others how this exercise is actually beneficial to the student and how this is not imposed on any one of you. It is not a procedural imposition for you to use NPTEL. We have avoided that from day one. When AICTE and MHRD wanted NPTEL to be compulsorily present in all the colleges, we were the first to object and oppose, saying that no degree of compulsion in learning can ever lead to learning. I think what is important is the learners and the teachers have to adopt something that they think is valuable. They have to be convinced by themselves that it is valuable. And if not, they should contribute to this process. Therefore, we have always maintained that NPTEL is a voluntary, is a social exercise in which members who feel that they can contribute, they can learn, participate with their own willingness. And therefore, if you are convinced that it is a very good project and it's useful to you and to your college, please spread the word. We don't have too much money to advertise. We do not uh, send newspaper advertisement by it, like some colleges do, saying they are the best institutions in the world. They are in the top 10 category. A full page advertisement every 10 days or every 15 days, that kind of money is not available. The government of India simply cannot afford that. Therefore, it is by word of mouth that NPTEL has, and also through electronic communication that NPTEL has reached the stage where it is. But now we are on the rising side of what is called the hockey stick. Therefore, it's very, very important that we go as steep and as quickly reach as many students as possible. Today, uh, Professor Andrew and Professor Pradap Bharati would share with you all the details of what the immediate launch on the 18th July and afterwards will be and how you can contribute to this through this mentoring and also having many students participate in it. If the students ask you questions about why it is useful to me and what would I do with it, please ask them in return. Maybe one question, when your mother taught you to speak, why did you think that it was useful to you? Okay. You learned. And then today you communicate with that, what you learned. Therefore, today if you learn something, you do not know when and how it will be useful. But please keep your mind open to learning. This is the one message that I would like to give all the professors and faculty members and other industrialists who contribute to this project. They have done it with this idea that this is the best of what I know. 
please learn. Please follow it up and discuss with me. And the only way that message can be taken up is the students to take up and say, yes, but I don't understand this. Can you explain this further? Can you tell me this further? Can you tell me where this will lead to? This dialogue has to happen, and of course, our network, the social network using the Google platform, allows this dialogue to be uh, instant during individual courses and offerings. But please feel free to communicate and write to all of us. I am no longer an NPTEL official coordinator. I was here till last year. But as uh, is always the case, that I'm around and I'm more than willing to contribute to any processes that NPTEL is involved. I have other activities I have to also worry about my students that are four or five students in my research group. Now, I'm a little bit concerned with their PhD and uh, their MSc and other things. But the team that is now here is better than the team that I ever assembled in all the 15 or 20 years that I've been associated with. And therefore, I think they will take it up forward. I'm more than willing to be with them and to learn from all of them and learn from all of you. Throughout the day, we will have many more discussions. I look forward to your interactions. Thank you very much. God bless all of us. Thank you, sir. Next, I'd like to welcome Professor Pratap Haridas to come and talk about local chapter and some of our previous runs. Uh, good morning. Um, actually, over the last uh, year or two, uh, we have been visiting uh, several colleges and uh, uh, conducting workshops. Um, and uh, in fact, so therefore, uh, actually, some, at least some of you are familiar faces. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a big crowd, but still we get to meet people and talk for a while. So I do see familiar faces. And uh, for once, it's uh, nice to have you visit us uh, and us hosting you. Uh, we're very happy that you could uh, join us this morning. Um, so we'll just uh, have a presentation here on uh, our online uh, course uh, certification. And uh, I, I would like to point out that you know even in this gathering, uh, there are uh, I mean representatives from colleges uh, who have just joined us in this process. Uh, and there are uh, representatives who have been here with us uh, for a while. Uh, so uh, we are giving you updated information, but some of the information you are uh, for sure you would have seen, uh, at least uh, some number of you would have seen, and uh, some of it will be new for everyone. Uh, there will be some information which, of course, if you are a uh, new participant in this process, uh, will be new altogether. And we also want to add a few points that uh, maybe we have not really emphasized much in some of our previous presentations, so we would like to do that. And most of it is based on uh, background from, I mean, uh, feedback from several of you. Uh, interaction with several of you and so on. So we'll get started here. Uh, so uh, as uh, uh, Professor Mangal Sundar pointed out and what you already know, it's, uh, this is a project from MHRD and uh, uh, NPTEL has been there uh, since uh, in various forms uh, since 1999 and certainly as a project since uh, 2003 and uh, we have, uh, yeah, a uh, lot of different things have been done, uh, mainly accessed all over the world. Uh, this is just a highlight of that. Uh, we give video lectures, MP3, transcripts, subtitles, all of these are uh, ongoing efforts on our side. All major disciplines are covered, and now we are on to uh, online certification. So this is all something that you are uh, familiar with. Uh, I also, I would like to point out that between, uh, you know, uh, we have more than 400 and uh, nearly 450 million uh, views of our content. Uh, this is the original content which was there on the uh, uh, as part of the NPTEL program. And uh, so the utility of the content has been well established uh, and is appreciated. So we have tried to make it more useful for our uh, student community because ultimately they need to uh, you know, utilize it and benefit from it. So much of effort has gone into it. Um, and it is in that context that the online certification process was started, uh, started because before this, uh, the content and even now, the primary content that we have there is on a reference mode. It's like a library, anybody can take and see. Uh, any of our students can take and see even now. Um, but if they, uh, so that is out of uh, self-interest uh, that they would do, which is fine, which is uh, always a nice thing to do. Uh, but this makes it more structured for them. Uh, they, they, uh, more number of them will see benefit uh, in it because you know time is limited, students are doing various things. Uh, so it is only uh, you know very uh, human and very natural to think you know what is the immediate benefit from this. Uh, maybe later when you become a professional, uh, you see the benefit in actually looking at good material uh, regardless of uh, you know a certificate at the end of it. But uh, as a student, you have a tendency to uh, look at it that way. Uh, there's already university exams and so on. 
So uh, uh, this is a nice uh, uh, you know incentive for a student to additionally uh, you know think of uh, you know to clear those doubts and actually have a reason to focus on this uh, material. So therefore, we have this online course initiative, um, and uh, as you all know, uh, you are aware the enrollment is free. So that's the other uh, very nice thing. Uh, we have an exam. Uh, again, this is our uh, you know distinguishing feature. Uh, there are international efforts uh, which differ in both these uh, critical aspects. Almost all uh, the two major international effect, uh, efforts of similar nature are commercial, and uh, they don't. So they definitely charge fee because they have to run a commercial uh, setup. Uh, we are funded by the government, so our uh, motivation is very different, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, enrollment is free. Enrollment is free. Uh, the only the exam has a fee because exam uh, requires, uh, you know, infrastructure. It requires uh, an exam partner to set it up. They have costs. They are a commercial organization, so we need to uh, be able to uh, uh, work with them. So that's uh, the process. And then we get certificates from IITs. So this is uh, uh, again something that students are very happy to uh, look at, and that's uh, that's one of the things that is a big draw. Uh, because I, I mean, it's a fact that we have only limited seats in IITs, so we have always uh, been forced to look at ways to limit the number of people entering the campus, and we are forced to restrict what courses they take, which is true even in your college. You have some admission process. You admit people to electrical engineering or civil engineering or uh, computer science. And they have to take only those courses. They cannot take any other course except for some very limited number of uh, electives. So, uh, so even when you enter a college, you have restrictions. And certainly, even before you enter a college, you have restrictions. So many students don't get in. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is actually the admission season across uh, India. And uh, I mean, if you know children of the right age, you are bound to hear you know all the anxiety of parents, uh, all the anxiety of the kids that you know they got into some college, the fees is so much, and uh, you know they may or may not be happy with it. So, on. so this uh, now enables them to reach into IITs, get a course from IIT, taught by an IIT faculty, interact with an IIT faculty, uh, get a certificate from the IITs, and then use it to in, in whatever man manner they seem uh, see uh, fit. Uh, so uh, uh, again, uh, just to let you know, these things I'll go over a little faster. So basically, the, it, the course is exactly like a online. Uh, I mean, exactly like a course that is uh, in campus, uh, except that uh, it all happens uh, online. Uh, there are lectures every week, there, and uh, we, in a more organized way, we have a tutorial every week also, and then uh, a final examination. Except that everything is online, so uh, that's where it all happens. Uh, there is a start date for the course and an end date for the course, just the way you would have in your uh, in your uh, university. Uh, so that way it is uh, structured, um, and uh, there's a final exam which is also on a fixed date, uh, known upfront. The uh, uh, interaction with faculty happens through the discussion forum, uh, which we are continuously improving. Uh, there are several faculty who very actively participate in it, who spent a lot of time on the discussion forum. Uh, of course, that varies from course to course. Uh, it depends on uh, how well the students and the faculty connect uh, through the discussion forum. But uh, opportunity is there, uh, and it can be utilized. And it is being utilized. Um, on campus, of course, the admission process is there, uh, clearly defined. There are prerequisites, uh, and, and importantly, students meet each other. So these are some things that you, uh, you should become aware of because these are the issues and concerns that students will have. So uh, in, in the campus, when you teach a class, 30 students or 40 students or 50 students who take that class are sitting right there in front of you. And they know each other's names, they know each other's faces, uh, they probably go to the same hostel. Uh, they have, uh, when they're free, they can uh, chat with each other and so on. Uh, that is not true when you do this kind of an uh, online course because again you may have some 50 students, you may even have more students, you may even have 1500 students taking that course or even 5000 students taking the course. But they will be distributed all ac across the country. So you may have only 3 students from Chennai taking it, maybe 20 students from Coimbatore taking it and they may be those 20 students may be spread across 10 colleges. So most of them will not know who the other person is. Uh, they will not know each other by face, uh, they will never, uh, it's not like you know at lunch they are going to meet and chat and all. So they are very separated out. So uh, the uh, there is a need to try and work with them such that they also feel a sense of community in that learning process. So the discussion forum is very important in that sense uh, for both the students to participate in uh, and for us also to participate in. And uh, uh, in the college there is clear uh, you know, uh, you know, goals that are present that students recognize. They are going to get a degree, they are going to get a transcript uh, and so on. And uh, so they know what is going to happen in, at the end of four years if they go through the process correctly. Uh, in our case, uh, the recognition mechanisms are evolving. Uh, we already have a few that are uh, uh, showing up, but we have opportunity to have more. So what we have done, it started in uh, 2014, so we are just little over two years into uh, this uh, activity with just one course we started in 2014. We have a, web a website uh, or a portal uh, where the uh, you know, institutes which are running the courses are listed. And there are a lot of courses listed down there. Uh, so a student can go and join any of those courses. 
uh, and since enrollment is free they can actually feel free to experiment and there are no real prerequisites there is no uh, filtration process uh, so it's not like only so many students can get in and there is definitely no uh, limitation like you know you joined a civil engineering program uh, you have a seat in a civil engineering program therefore i will not allow you to take a basic electronics uh, course or a computer science course there's no restriction anybody can take anything and you don't even have to be a student you can be you know a person who's uh, working from home a working professional uh, maybe somebody who had to leave college for a while and would like to go back to something uh, so all these things are possible and uh, this is just a summary of some of the things I mentioned. These are the major aspects of our online course. There's a discussion forum, a certification exam. This is again very, uh, I mean, designed. We have done a lot of things to design this whole process for the Indian student community. Uh, so for us in India, the exam is a very important integral part of uh, establishing that the student indeed participated in the process. And uh, the evaluation or the score or the certificate that they are producing uh, is, uh, you know, uh, has credibility. That's a very important part of the Indian uh, process. If you just, uh, I have heard people who, who have told me that, you know, they have taken uh, some multinational, uh, you know, course uh, online, where the entire process is only online. It's totally on faith and they have produced that certificate in an interview and that person said, I can also print a certificate like this. So, there's a big difference there. So, here we are actually doing it in person uh, with all the, you know, rigor of, a, a, you know, in-face uh, examination and the certificate is e-verifiable with a photograph of the person, the exact scores they have got and so on. So, that's all things that we have put together. So, that's a course. Uh, so, there's always, once you get into a course, once you click on a course and go in, there will always be an introductory video sitting there. So, a student or anyone, even as a faculty, if you would like to advise a student, some of your students saying, you know, why not you try this course? You can look at the introductory video, get some idea of what is that course. You'll also get an idea of uh, how that faculty is, uh, you know, communicating, are you comfortable, uh, things like that. Something about the course, what, the, what is going to be covered there, what is the intended audience is listed here. Of course, uh, and the prerequisites. These two are there only as guidelines so that uh, uh, you will have a sense of, you know, who, is the, who are the people who are more likely to benefit from the course uh, comfortably. Others may also be able to benefit, they may have to put in little extra effort, that's basically it. But, uh, so this is not enforced, it is simply a guideline. And then once you get in, you have all the lectures listed here. For each lecture, there's a small write-up below which tells you sort of uh, what's going to happen in that lecture and some additional links if there are any, th any that are uh, relevant. And then, uh, again, assessment is an important thing. Uh, as I meant, spoke about the final examination, which is, uh, you know, invigilated, proctored in a center and so on. Assignments, on the other hand, we allow the students to experience an online uh, learning process. So, assignments are uh, on faith, done by the student at their uh, respective, uh, you know, uh, homes or wherever they are located. And really, we are not really enforcing anything. If they speak to, of course, we would like them to submit their own assignment. But if they will, uh, they would like to speak to their friends, learn something in the process, it's fine. I think ultimately, if they learn, that is good. So that's, uh, that's all it is. Uh, we, we are not really getting too technical about it. And this is how a discussion forum would look. People can post questions and uh, get uh, answers done. Sometimes the questions are, uh, you know, uh, elementary questions. I mean, in the sense, they are just uh, procedural questions. They may want to know when is the exam going to happen, what is the format of the exam. These are questions that your students may post. Sometimes it will be technical questions that, uh, you know, some particular uh, aspect uh, explained in a particular lecture in the course was not clear to them. Or it, uh, it is something that is contradicting something they have read in a book. Something like that. They may ask some fairly uh, involved technical question. So, uh, again, uh, we do have, uh, again, uh, we have evolved a lot of uh, features that are unique in, in our opinion. Uh, so, we have uh, hands-on programming in, uh, on our uh, uh, portal. So, people can uh, program on C, C++. A lot of other options are also there which can be introduced based on the faculty who is teaching the course. Uh, we, have we can have both objective as well as subjective uh, assignments. So, we do have uh, a process where we have teaching assistants here uh, who are, you know, MS, PhD students here who work with our faculty. And uh, so, th they will assist the faculty in grading uh, subjective assignments because, uh, particularly because the numbers can be large. Uh, you can have a course which is a very, I mean, popular course, let's say, something that many people feel is uh, necessary for their uh, learning process. And we may have uh, 1,500, 2,000 uh, more or even more students uh, in that course. And uh, the exact fraction that is uh, going to stay active not, uh, in it is will only when you go into the course, you will know. So, potentially this can be a large operation. When we start the course, we don't know. Uh, we have no idea whether it's going to be 100 students or 10,000 students taking that course. Uh, except if it's a very specialized topic, then you know in general, yes, the audience is going to be limited. But some of the basic courses, you can have a sudden spike in numbers. 
and uh, this is a typical may most of you know these kinds of exam centers maybe in your colleges you already have that our exam partner right now is tcs so many of you in fact already know this exam partner they typically work with uh, many colleges and have centers there for various examinations uh, we use them for our examination uh, we have been working in fact for them also uh, i mean I, I would like to share with you that for them also this is a very uh, different learning process for them because they are typically they have a certain types of examinations that they are already set up to run and uh, in fact many of the banking exams and many other uh, you know employment related exams are all run within that framework of that uh, setup that they already have uh, most of the time for our courses we uh, uh, enable our faculty encourage our faculty to experiment to try out all new new things in the evaluation process so that the student also really benefits it, they they shouldn't get stuck to you know on standard way of uh, you know ticking a b c d a b c d and being done we would like them to actually participate learn something do a worked example uh, and so on so we are uh, trying trying out new new examination types of questions so we we had one uh, exam on spoken english one course on spoken english and uh, the faculty actually had students record their answer paper was recordings that they had to make in the exam center so they came there was a room separately for the recording process while the other exams were going on with online and offline question papers the students who came for this exam had to sit in a room they were called in one by one and they had to make recordings for maybe about 10 minutes there were several uh, you know questions and comments that were there they had to respond to those comments and speak for a few minutes and get it recorded and those recordings were then given to the faculty as the answer paper which the person uh, then the faculty evaluated it and uh, gave a grade so these are all new things new processes uh, from our uh, perspective that we are trying to do and our exam partner is working with us uh, trying to assist us in the process but this is not without hiccups uh, naturally when we try something new uh, it, uh, there's a great potential that there can be an error uh, tcs also recognizes that they are uh, when they work with us uh and in fact i mean although we would like to run it flawlessly and we make every effort to run it flawlessly from time to time some error creeps in but we uh, always student uh, you know interest is uh, paramount for us uh, so if there is an uh, issue that crops up we try and uh, try our best to resolve it in a manner that is you know good for the, all the students that they are happy with so uh, it's a very interactive process it's a learning process uh, so that's something that i wanted to share with you you will always see us we, we we will not fit into a pattern we will definitely we that is not our intention we will not uh, stick to any one pattern we will keep evolving we will push boundaries and in that process we will also learn so that learning means we may make errors here and there although that is not the intention uh we have evolved uh, our uh, uh, scoring pattern is something that we have been evolving uh, again uh, you know intention was to first of all encourage people to participate so we are not trying to discourage people from participating and also to uh, we are not running an entrance exam here so we are not so concerned about you know trying to eliminate uh, you know 20000 students that's not the purpose of our, any of our courses instead most of the time uh, we would like to focus on what is it that the student has learned uh, if they have learned something we would like to certify that they have learned that's all so that if they go to an interview and they show an nptel certificate and the interview uh, you know panel asks them some questions there's a good chance that the, st the student actually is competent enough to answer those, those questions that our being uh, i mean having done well in our course would be indicative that the student is actually capable of answering some questions so that's the purpose that uh, our course tries to accomplish so we have now uh, this process uh, we have uh, about uh, roughly 25% of the marks uh, given from the online assignments so all the assignments that they do uh, from that we'll get uh, whatever the total that comes to that will be converted to 25% and that will count to 25% of the score and the final exam would also contain about 75% of the score so we do emphasize on the final exam uh, but the uh, 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 whatever work they have done in the assignment will count it will make a significant difference if they do very badly here it will make a difference to their uh, then chances are they may not do well in the exam also so therefore at least they should do well here and uh, ideally if they have done well here that should uh, convey that they have learned something and then possibly they will do well here and we do have uh, grades of certificates uh, we are moving to a process where uh, for participation we are no longer going to provide any certificates uh, we will not be providing certificates because uh, first of all uh, the numbers are climbing up uh, drastically we have uh, you know huge numbers of students uh, participating in our courses and we really want them to cross some minimum threshold before they get a certificate it shouldn't be that you know they just they just uh, click a button and get a certificate so that's not our purpose here um at the same time we are not running an entrance exam so we are somewhere in the middle so we do want them to make some level of performance before they earn a certificate so they have to earn it otherwise we are not giving it to them if they cross 40% so that means they have got 25 and then at least 15% if they have got this full 25 at least 15% from here then they get a successful completion certificate so that's like that's more like what people would associate with you know participating in a course at least this far you have to get then if it is more than 60% they get an elite certificate 
if it's more than 90 percent they get an elite certificate with a gold medal uh, put on it so we are uh, uh, through all our processes that you will see in, in in other ways also when we communicate with you uh, and we put in new processes in place for uh, various ways in which we interact with uh, say spocs and so on you will find that our emphasis will be on students performing well uh, our emphasis is not so much on numbers we don't really care how many students take a course we would like more students to try it so we, do, we are not trying to discourage them we would like to encourage them to take those courses but that's only one aspect of the show uh, so if if uh, there are places where you know thousand students enroll uh, that's only one aspect of the show and uh, we would be more interested if you know 20 of the, uh, them get an elite certificate uh, elite i mean sorry gold medal if 20 of them get a gold medal that uh, that is much more important for us than simply saying that you know we have had 500 students participating, 1,000 students participating, and so on. So we want the whole process as a community. You no, know, this is not just an activity that we are doing on our own. It's an activity that we are doing along with you and along with the student community. We want that value system to be there so that uh, when students take a course uh, and they participate in the whole process, they appreciate that uh, you know the intention is that uh, they should learn. The results should show that they have learned. And the whole, any reward process that we have, any uh, you know reward process for the student and the whole community as a whole that comes. Uh, is reflective of this uh, you know, quality performance. So you will always see that in any other communication that we send to you also, please always keep that in mind. Uh, we value the fact that students participate, but that is only the first step. Uh, that alone will not, uh, is not, we are not going to be satisfied with just that. So overall our systems will keep reflecting that. Certificates will reflect that. Any other process we put also will reflect that. So if we contact you on anything else, you will see this in the background of our uh, communication. Um, we have courses of different duration. Uh, now, uh, increasingly, uh, there are universities which are looking at, uh, which are uh, not just looking at, which have uh, enabled and are actively uh, carrying out credit transfer processes. Uh, so, we do have courses of different uh, duration and those are roughly equivalent of a one credit course, two credit course or three to four credit course equivalent. So, that's, that's the duration of the course and that reflects in the credit requirement. So, why do we have one credit course? Well, uh, the point is that some of the uh, courses that are done in NPTEL are highly advanced courses uh, and some other courses are basic courses. So typically basic course can run 40 hours, you can uh, run something, for, uh, I mean there will be content, there will be content because you're really exposing the student to a wide range of different things. Uh, specialized courses are often not like that, you have uh, you know a very uh, concentrated content of a limited nature uh, and therefore 10 hours fits that. Uh, reasonably, correctly. I mean, it doesn't, you're not overdoing the uh, content, you're not overdoing the duration, it's just right. Uh, so that's how we have this and uh, uh, people can pick it up for different levels of uh, credits. Um, and in fact, when we do this, uh, when we, uh, I'll, I'll talk about other universities also which are doing it. The point is, uh, the credit is not really given by us. The student takes the course, they successfully complete it, we give you the raw data. We give you, you know, what course, how many hours, uh, what is the score the student got. The raw data is given to you. It is for you to uh, uh, incorporate it in your system as uh, found appropriate by your processes. So you may have some process, uh, so you are uh, you are free to uh, you know put this into your process in the manner that you think is appropriate. So what you consider as I mean, so a student gets 75 uh, marks, let's say 75 percent they get. It is your university's uh, decision on what they want to, uh, how they want to treat that. They can treat it simply as 75% if that's the way the marking scheme is. If they want to convert that to grades, it's up to you to decide what grade you want to give. We will give you the data, not just of that student, but for the entire course, uh, for all the students who took that course. What is the average? What is the distribution? All that information will be available to you. You can calculate as you see fit. So that uh, full flexibility is there. We are always open on that, uh, that process. So just to give you an idea, we have now completed nine different course runs. Uh, so that means the course has started, uh, we went through the course and we finished off with the final exam. Nine different course runs we have completed and we have completed 122 courses uh, so far. And that's, uh, you, ca you can see more or less steadily we have been increasing the number of uh, courses uh, in terms of how many courses are coming in. And increasingly more and more, uh, this has also got to do with our own faculty also getting more comfortable with the process. The online course process is, uh, uh, has specific aspects which are different from the kind of course that we run in our campus and therefore uh, our faculty also need some time to accommodate, I mean adjust to this new processes. Uh, and uh, and it is a lo uh, it's always a learning uh, you know, uh, curve that is there. Uh, so it takes time for people to adjust. Uh, so invariably, in fact, their second run of the course will be vastly better than their first run. And you can see here various departments, we have you know, not restricted ourselves to any uh, particular discipline. This is another way in which we differ uh, greatly from uh, other you know, international uh, efforts of this nature. Uh, they, are, they are sort of, because they are commercial, they are sort of forced to limit themselves to you know, courses that are uh, hugely popular. 
So they limit themselves to those courses because that's where they get the maximum number of students. So any payment uh, process that is there, uh, the profit margins are higher, etc. We are not limited like that. We are clear that we want to I mean, complete the entire undergraduate curriculum, make it available. We want to cover it. We want to cover specialized courses. So we are not worried if there's a course, uh, there are some courses where there are only 100 students taking it or 50 students taking it. And there are other courses where you know, there are uh, 10,000 students taking it. It's all fine for us. Uh, as long as there is academic value in the activity, uh, the uh, NPTEL process will support it. That's basically all it is. Uh, you can see also slowly more and more institutes uh, are getting, are participating in it. Uh, and there are going to be, uh, increasingly there are going to be more processes available so that uh, you know, faculty from other institutes can also participate. Uh, there may be uh, uh, additional portals uh, uh, put up for it and uh, different processes available. And in general this will be, you know, it will grow in a, in a way that you know, all of us can participate in various levels. So that is a process that is, uh, that is steadily coming up and we will keep you posted when uh, we have it uh, uh, operational. So this is all just selected titles, I won't go into it, simply to show you that we cover various disciplines. Uh, these are uh, online certification, what impact we have done. Uh, you can see that course enrollments is almost six and a half lakh. Uh, and uh, we have you know, 32,000 exam registrations uh, till uh, May 2016. Um, attendance is 85% uh, in our exams. Uh, in general, this, uh, what you see here, this uh, blue is the enrollment, the red is uh, the uh, people who actually register for an exam. So the enrollment is, uh, means the student simply uh, connects with the course and says that I'm just going to see, those, uh, see the content. They may or may not see the content, but they have joined the course by hitting the join button. The uh, registration means they registered for the final exam, which me typically means they did assignments uh, and then uh, went through the whole course process and uh, did the final exam. Generally, only about 10% uh, uh, or so will participate in the final exam for various reasons. And this is uh, in keeping with uh, international standards on this uh, activity. And we are fine with it. We don't see that as anything negative. Uh, we would like more people to try uh, different things that they have not tried before. And then whatever they feel comfortable doing, whatever they like, they proceed and complete. So that is the process. So we, it, is, it is all about including people, not about excluding people. Uh, and we have got data on what, what kind of people have been involved. Uh, some of them are, uh, this is again their, uh, you know, their uh, certification from their side, uh, voluntary information that they give us. About 16% are employed, 80% uh, are students, and 7% are others. We also have faculty in, uh, enrolling for uh, some of our courses. Um, and so that's uh, an aspect we want to show you. Uh, we do have an online uh, portal for uh, the which be, which is uh, which sort of highlights uh, the uh, efforts put in by our students because uh, as I mentioned it's a uh, it's something that we want to encourage we want the community to feel happy with what they're doing so uh, the toppers of courses are listed here the names of the colleges are listed here uh, and the statistics are uh, listed here and if you go into the details you can actually see what is uh, the scores that the student got for the assignments what they got for the exam. And across assignments, what were the scores uh, obtained by the students uh, and uh, the distribution of scores uh, for the course uh, from all students. So a lot of detail is available once uh, you go into a particular student's uh, uh, you know, mark, uh, mark sheet. So uh, for your college, uh, this is very useful uh, if you are, you are trying to do some uh, evaluation based on it. And uh, the students have the, since it's, there is always an element of privacy in this, the students have the right to decide uh, where and how the information can be shared. So they can select whether they want the details to be shared with potential employers or uh, have it shared with colleges. So it is their choice and we respect that uh, choice. And credit transfer. So credit transfer, as I said, you know, we do the course, we give the content and we give the exam and we give the scores. After that, the, how the university takes it up or the college takes it up is uh, their uh, uh, call, how they want to do it. Um, you can see that from July 2015 for almost a year now, uh, Centurion University uh, in Orissa, uh, Kalasalingam University in Tamil Nadu, and uh, Madanapalli Institute of Technology in Andhra Pradesh. They have all been doing uh, credit uh, transfer actively with us. And uh, I mean, to tell you that, you know, this is not something that is isolated with uh, outside of IITs. Inside IIT Madras, we already have uh, departments where uh, the uh, um, uh, students can take the same NPTEL online courses that you, uh, say your college students are taking and get credit in our system. So it is not something that, uh, you know, it's only an offer for others and that uh, we don't think it is uh, uh, up to our standards or anything. Our faculty are teaching, our evaluation scheme is on, our students take it, they get credit for it. So we already have some departments that have approved it. Uh, many more departments are, up, are in the process right now of approving it. Right now, actually we had meetings just a few days ago on it. Uh, more are approving it. 
and uh, again li like in your university there will be some limits on it how many credits they can do what kind of credits they can do under which category they can do some framework will be there that framework can change uh, but this is a process that we are actively doing our students do it my department students do it uh, and this whole activity is expected to grow with support from MHRD uh, you may hear more about it uh, in the upcoming months uh, there is an intention to make uh, there's an intention and an effort to make this uh, a, a much more uh, a national uh, initiative from the government side. Uh, I mean, we are already funded by the government only. It's not like we're doing it, uh, I mean, without their assistance. But there is a more coordinated uh, activity that's likely to come out in the next few months, which may include other disciplines, include medicine, include uh, legal aspects and so on. Uh, and uh, at that point, it may be much more visible. Right now, we are doing personal contact with you, with your students and so on. But of course, when, once it becomes a government initiative uh, in a specific manner, uh, you may see much more of it. Uh, the uh, lot of the efforts that we have all done as a community in this process uh, is the you know uh, core of the learning that has gone in towards making this uh, initiative uh, in, in the grander scale. So uh, many of the things that we have discussed with you, many of the things that we are working with you, you are working with us, all those things are uh, features that you will see when this becomes a national initiative. We, uh, I mean, we really share something very special here uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we have you know accomplished as a unit together. Uh, because uh, you will see, you know, a, a very unique national initiative, uh, which you may not see anywhere else, even internationally, uh, where many of the features that we have come up due to our own experience with it as a, uh, you know, as a community, are the f uh, features that are, you know, defining that whole activity. Uh, several principles have made it mandatory for faculty to do one online course per semester and uh, linked increments to certificates. This is just something I, we just wanted to share. And uh, students can use it for various things, for internship with companies and institutes. Uh, we have course instructors, uh, some course instructors. Again, this is not uh, uh, compulsory, but uh, uh, instructors are doing it because they really uh, see this as a very nice opportunity. Uh, because it's not just a, it's not, uh, th this is something that you should, uh, be, I would really like to share with you. This is not just an opportunity for your students. It's an opportunity for our faculty uh, and, uh, and, your, uh, and uh, students and the general public in the, in the spread across the country. Uh, see, because uh, just like you may know, I mean, we say, you know, students try to get in and only a small number of students get in. So our faculty can actually access only those students under the normal setting. Using this online course initiative, uh, we reach and we are able to communicate with students interested in our topics, students working hard, very intelligent students all over the country. So you can, I mean, I can reach two students in Assam, three students in Calcutta, uh, whom otherwise I would never be able to access. I would never have an opportunity ever to meet them or talk to them or, you know, ex exchange any information with them. Whereas now through this process, I can talk to two people in Assam, three people in Calcutta, four people in Bombay, and do this in a very structured way throughout the semester. And so when they do well, I, it's a, you know, it gives me great pressure, it gives them great pressure. If they've done well, we would be happy to invite them here for internships in summer. We already have some summer internships in IIT through various other uh, settings. This is another way in which some faculty are uh, looking at it. And this also helps them prepare for gate examination because uh, we are not diluting standards. We are trying to maintain good standards in our courses. So presumably somebody who does well in our courses uh, will be able to do well in GATE. So this is just a list. Uh, we, I won't go into great detail. This is just there for your information that uh, there are, you know, 10 hour, 30 hour, 20 hour courses uh, with various numbers. And there is a guest login. You may already have it. Uh, if not, you can uh, always uh, look this up and take it. It simply is, uh, you have to go to the online course uh, portal, onlinecourses.nptel.ac.in, and there's an ID, you, uh, reviewer1, and the password is one reviewer. That's it. Reviewer1 at nptel.iatm.ac.in is the login, and the uh, password is one reviewer. If you do this, this uh, reviewer1, this uh, you know hypothetical student called reviewer1, is actually enrolled in all our courses. So uh, uh, if you go in like this, you can see all our completed courses also. You can see what all, or what all has been completed. Student can see it. Uh, you can see it. You can, you can be in a better position to advise uh, your students saying, you know, this is maybe an interesting course for you and so on. And it will also give you an ability to tell us, you know, what course is maybe more interesting to you. Um, so these are some uh, uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, so I, I think I'll just, uh, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, I think Bharti will look at it. And uh, so local chapter, uh, we do have, uh, as Kamala was pointing out to you, we have now got more than 518 uh, local chapters. Uh, and uh, so there is a, a separate uh, uh, you know, website for it. And a uh, lot of information is uh, put up there. We have state-wise list of uh, uh, local chapters. Uh, we have uh, the list of colleges with uh, NPTEL local chapter. And also what is required to start a local chapter, which is very straightforward. Most of you already know it. That's how uh, we have this uh, gathering here today. And uh, for every uh, local chapter page, where it displays the college and SPOC details. 
uh, statistics of courses taken by the college are listed and college toppers are listed. So it's a very, uh, again, like I said, you know, we, it, it's, it's all about being in a community and uh, working with each other. So all of that uh, happens here. And what are the benefits? The main primary benefits are this. Uh, we right now work with the exam partner in setting up the uh, exam centers. Uh, they have some formula based on which they set up the exam centers, based on how many students have asked, in which place they have asked and all that. So that is why we have to do the registration a little bit ahead of time. Only then they have the time to do this analysis and then uh, distribute the centers. But regardless of their uh, way, manner of distribution, uh, if you do have more than 50 students uh, registering for an examination, you can request for an exam uh, center in, in your city and we will do our best to get you a center there. So because we, are, we can work with the exam partner, we will do our best to get you a center so that your students don't have to travel very far. Uh, and, uh, and you can make payments uh, for the exam uh, in bulk as a single DD. Uh, we are actually evolving this uh, exam payment process uh, more and more to make it easier and easier for students to make the uh, to participate in the process uh, but we do recognize that you know uh, sitting in a city we assume certain things uh, we assume net banking is there we assume that you know people have access to it and all those things which is not true in many smaller towns people may not have i mean students may not even have an account maybe their dad only is paying or mom is paying or something may be there and, and those people also may, may not be very familiar or comfortable with net banking. So therefore, uh, it is very natural that uh, students would like to pay in some other form. And so we have all those things uh, available. And very importantly, uh, this enables you to work with us to give scholarships to the students. Uh, we simply require, uh, but this is a little bit based on uh, corporate uh, funding that we get. We are, I mean, there are uh, you know, CSR funding opportunities, uh, corporate social responsibility funding opportunities. So some companies from time to time, will use their funds to fund uh, NPTEL activity. And in that case, they give us a fair bit of freedom on how to use those funds. We mo uh, typically, we, one major uh, activity where we put those funds is providing scholarships to students. So 50% exam fee waiver will be there. So if it's 1,000 rupees or 1,200 rupees that they have to pay, they only have to pay 500 rupees. And uh, if you are a local chapter, you can ask for this in a very coordinated way. We only require the principal of the uh, college to send us a letter saying the following students are economically backward and they require the uh, scholarship. We don't, we are not asking any certificate, nothing. Whatever you say, your principal says, we go with it. So that's how it is. And then uh, faculty can be mentors who can follow progress of students in the course. Uh, this enables your students to stay focused on the course and complete it. Uh, because students being students, you know, when they start with some enthusiasm, then there are so many things going on in their life uh, that they get distracted, they may start getting into other things. So from time to time it helps if, you know, if some faculty sees them and says, you know, have you done this week's work, have you done? And then they get back to their, uh, you know, little bit of uh, activity that they have to do. So I think we sort of uh, halt with this. We have 518 colleges with local chapters, fee waivers that we have already given to 13,000 plus students, so that's very significant. Uh, we have conducted uh, exams in uh, 50 plus cities, specifically on request from local chapters. So this is not an isolated thing. Uh, we have uh, you know, really done this. Uh, we have only done you know, a limited number of course runs. Uh, in that itself, we have done this uh, 50 plus times. And uh, more than 1,000 mentors have participated so far. Of course, we are trying to get the, define the role of the mentor a little better, so that uh, you know, it is done in a very proper way. So I think that's it. We'll halt here. If you have any questions, uh, take it. Otherwise, we'll move on. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to invite Professor Andrew Pro Tangaraj to share a few words with us. <laughs> lot of words. Yeah, actually, Kamala said a few words. I'm going to say a lot of words. Some of them are just going to be controversial. Some of them will be, I hope, motivational. Some of them may be inspirational. Let's see. Hopefully, you won't throw anything at me. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, uh, very hearty welcome to IIT Madras and uh, to the building which houses NPTEL. I don't know if you know, NPTEL IIT Madras office is in the third floor of this building. How many of you have been to the office? Maybe, yeah. So if you have not, please do uh, go up. Uh, there's a nice new lift that we have, uh, flashy lift. You can take that and go up to the third floor. Uh, I see a couple of people from TCS, they've come here quite often, <laughs> they know exactly how that is. So you're welcome to come and see how we operate, see our studios, our staff, our staff most of, mostly they're here, we'll introduce them to you formally as well. Uh, thanks a lot for coming, I know some of you have traveled some distance. Uh, so I'm going to focus mostly on uh, how to, I mean, to give you ideas on how to use NPTEL online certification and use what we offer to the maximum extent possible so that it benefits you, it benefits your students. Okay, so I'm going to focus mostly on that in the talk. Uh, I think some of you are probably 
uh, very seasoned uh, SPOCs and uh, local chapters. You've been with us for a long time. I see people uh, whom I can recognize. They they know exactly what to do. They are uh, very good at it. But maybe some of you are new. I think some of the very new local chapters are also here. Maybe all this is going uh, very fast for you. You're not uh, able to understand. So I'll maybe walk you through some of the important steps uh, and uh, give you ideas on how, how to benefit from this the most. Okay, So there are a lot of, uh, I mean, this uh, the NPTEL online certification is growing at a fast pace. Sometimes I'm scared at the rate at which it's growing. Okay, <laughs> Too many students, a lot of local chapter colleges. Uh, it's, it's a bit scary. I think our processes are not uh, so well ironed out that we can scale at this extent. And uh, what is even more scary is uh, in maybe a month or so from now, you will hear a big announcement from the ministry. Okay, So this announcement uh, is going to be about something called Swayam, which is uh, more or less, I, I, to put it uh, very bluntly, they have, they have taken what we are doing and they are trying to make a big announcement out of it. Okay, <laughs> So <laughs> you will see exactly the same thing they would do. You know, many, of the, many of the ideas they have, the MOOCs portal that they are trying to build, uh, they want to have faculty teach uh, MOOCs. They want to have certification associated with it. They want to have credit transfer associated with it. So, of course, when the ministry says credit transfer, I guess most universities would follow suit. And uh, the UGC itself is uh, is going is coming out with a set of regulations for credit transfer. So, how to do it uh, and encouraging everybody. I believe the AACT is also going to come out with it. Uh, of course, ultimately, the universities have to do it. So, this whole thing of doing online courses for credit is going to become a big reality going forward. And uh, I believe NPTEL is going to be driving the effort from the front in Swayam as well. So NPTEL will be one of the main contributors to Swayam. Uh, whenever it's announced, it should be announced soon. So, so uh, while we are here talking about it in a small scale, this is going to happen in a big scale as well. Hopefully, the pointers I give you will help you in, uh, in benefiting from Swayam as well. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, before I even start, I was hoping I can go through the portal once. I don't know, many of you probably have seen the portal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, just walk you through the portal uh, to begin with. It's always good to uh, see the portal once. The portal, of course, is onlinecourses.nptel.ac.in. Okay. okay, so most of you have seen this. Uh, so what you see uh, in the top part is basic information about the course run. Okay, so whenever we say a course run, it's like a semester in your college. Uh, this one, right? Yeah, sure. It's like a semester in your college, right? When you begin a semester, you come up with the timetable for the semester and what happens when. So this part is the timetable for the semester. Uh, this video is just a simple video telling what happens. What is most crucial is what comes below. Okay, the currently open courses, and uh, this well, it just lists three courses here. Okay, so someone who looks at it first might think, okay, there are only three courses open. But what is most crucial in this picture? That little red triangle on the right, which you click on, will give you the other courses. But also, I'll suggest one more way of going through it. Instead of just going through all the open courses, I will really suggest going through course categories. Okay, So if you click on course categories, you will get the names of all the different branches and disciplines. And you can browse the open courses discipline-wise. Okay, You might be a computer science engineer, you might be a civil engineer, mechanical engineer, chemical engineer, whatever area you are interested in, you can go and pick that area and then browse. Okay, So let me pick computer science and engineering. So you click on that, you will get all the courses in computer science engineering. Okay, The courses that come initially are those that are open currently. Okay, So again, for every course, we have basic information here. This is uh, Introduction to Modern Application Development. The instructor's name is here, Dr. Gaurav Raina, who is from uh, IIT Madras. And then there is the course duration. When does the course start? This course happens to start on September 5th and ends on September 30th. It's just a four-week course. And then the last date for enrollment. Okay, Basic information about the course. This will be there in uh, one course after another. And to the right is the Join button. Anyone who wants to enroll has to just go click that join button and you will enroll. Okay, So you can see the other courses here. Maybe you can uh, look at this one. Design and analysis of algorithms. The instructor is Professor Madhavan Mukund from Chennai Mathematical Institute who happens to be here. So maybe it's a chance for me to introduce him. 
Madhav. So he's here. So in case you want to bug him later on, he's around. So course duration is July 18th to September 9th. It's an eight week course. The last date is 18th July. So like this, you'll see different courses. Okay. Now suppose let's say uh, design and analysis of algorithms is a course. I know what it is. Okay. Many of you might know it, but you want to know some more details. Okay. So maybe I'll pick some other course. Let's say introduction. Okay. With this course itself, since Madhavan is here, we'll pick it. So you want to know a little bit more before clicking this join button and committing yourself to doing the course. Maybe you want to learn a little bit more. So what do you do? You can go and click on that course. It will give you some more basic information okay, on what the course is, okay, about the course, then the intended audience, prerequisites, and some more details okay, about the instructor, etc. And there will also be a little video, which is about a four or five minute video made by the instructor, uh, instructor to describe what the course is, what, who it is for. Okay. So I will definitely suggest that you read this information and look at the video and then you can think about joining. In fact, the join button is also here at the end of this course. There's lots of information, the course layout, what happens in one week, what happens in the second week, third week, etc. You can see all that. And then finally, also there's a join button. Okay, so you can join from here as well. Uh, so this is uh, something that you can do. Okay. All right. So this is how the courses are uh, laid out on the portal. You can go and join. Okay, so, uh, so maybe I should just click the join button to show you what happens there once. Okay, so first thing it will ask you is uh, it will ask you for a Google account. Okay, so most people typically use their Gmail account at this point. Okay, but you can also use any other email account which is associated with a Google account. Okay, so you can have a, something called a Google account with any email. Okay, so it's possible. Uh, if you go to google.com, you can have a Google account there. It's possible. So for instance, my email is andrew at ee.iitm.ac.in. It has a Google account associated with it. And I can log in. Of course, I won't show you my password. Okay. So once you do that, it's going to ask you for some basic things. So this is something that Google authentication will always ask. So NPTEL online courses is asking for something. You, you say allow. Once you say allow, you are uh, logged in to the portal. Okay, so this is basic login to the portal. Uh, this login uh, is uh, is a Google login that we allow on our portal. Okay, so now for registration, some personal details are being asked. Uh, so you put in your personal details. Sometimes it it'll get filled based on uh, before. It will ask you for educational details, uh, etc. So now you know. I mean, a couple of things I should point out here. Uh, the profession is very important, okay? So it's an important field. So particularly, many of you might uh, do the registration yourself. You might also have to help your students to register, okay? So here, there are a couple of things to watch out, very important. Uh, so most students are probably going to say student here, okay? Once they say student, notice what happens, okay? This is a new feature we have introduced in our portal. Uh, for people who are even uh, local chapters from a long time back, please pay attention to this. Once the person says he's a student, in the educational details, one question will come up here. Are you part of an NPTEL local chapter? Okay. This is an important question and your students should say yes. So once you say yes, notice what happens here. Okay. Nothing happens, but anyway. <laughs> so you say yes, then you can pick the state. Okay. So let's say, uh, what state shall I pick? I think more, many of you are probably from Tamil Nadu. So let's say some state which is out of this, out of Tamil Nadu. Andhra Pradesh. Oh, it's very close. UP, ah, hey, there you go. UP, I like that. So let's go UP, Uttar Pradesh. So you pick Uttar Pradesh and uh, your college name should come here, okay? Let's see, what's the name of the college? Dronacharya. Oh, so you're a famous local chapter. Okay, so there you go. Dronacharya group of institutions, Greater Noida, Uttar Pradesh. Is that correct? So they should pick that, okay? So now, this is very crucial for your students to do, okay? So if they go and register, they have to say they're from a local chapter and they have to pick the correct state and college. Because once they do that, we can give you a list of students from your college who are enrolled in our courses. This enables us to do it and this is a very crucial thing, okay? So otherwise, it's very, very hard for you to chase your students and get the list of names, okay? So this is something we have introduced this semester in the portal. Please make sure when your students register, when your faculty register, they definitely, definitely do this, okay? So this is very important. And one more detail we are asking for, which is actually not mandatory on the site, but please ask your students to enter this, is the college roll number. So this also helps you track 
every single detail that you want about the student. Okay, so this is a new feature we have introduced. Please ask your students and faculty who enroll for these courses to put in this. Okay, so of course, if you're a faculty, you're not going to probably write a college roll number. You might have some other number for writing it, but we leave that blank. Okay, so that's it. this is a crucial new addition. For local chapters, it's a, it's a very enabling feature. It helps you to get the list of students from your college who are enrolled in a course. Okay, so this is very important. Please follow this step. Hopefully, it's clear. All right, so that's the registration. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, after this, you have to agree to the NPTEL Terms of Service, which is actually very generic, but you also need to agree to follow the honor code. Uh, I think, please read the honor code. It's very important. And you should encourage your students also to read the honor code and try and follow it as much as possible. And you click enroll, you're enrolled in the course. Okay, so once you're enrolled, what happens is you have access to the course content. Okay, now the course itself starts only on July 18th. So July 18th, Madhavan is here. Madhavan, courses content is going to go up on July 18th. Yes, he says yes. Okay. So July 18th, you will see the first week's course content. Or maybe even a little bit before that, he'll put it up. Okay. So usually the first week's content will probably be available maybe a week before that. Okay. So it's useful so that uh, you get into the course slowly. Okay. So you'll see quite often students would struggle with the first week's content a little bit. So it's good to uh, get access to that early. Okay, hopefully this is uh, helpful for you. So students, when they enroll through a local chapter, they can provide that information on the portal and we can make this information available to you uh, through the SPOC page or something like that. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to say. Uh, I think that's all I wanted to say about the portal itself. I'm, I'm gonna move back to my presentation and start uh, going over the slides there. Okay, so, uh, so like I said, I'm going to focus more on uh, what, what and as an SPOC, as a local chapter, what you should be thinking about, what you should focus on, what will help you derive the maximum benefit out of uh, NPTEL online courses. Uh, of course, this is once again uh, my view. I'm very interested in hearing from you as well. Okay, so what is it that you have done which you think is very beneficial? Uh, now, when you stand up and say that, all the other local chapters here also benefit. Okay, so they also hear it. Maybe they can adopt it in their colleges. Okay, so this is very useful. Uh, we, we should think of this as a more of a knowledge sharing or practice sharing sort of uh, event as opposed to just me telling you what I think is the best way of uh, benefiting because at the end of the day, you're running your college. I'm, I have very little information about how your college runs, right? So you have to think about what works best for you. So, but nevertheless, some of the ideas, some of the emphasis uh, that we have from NPTEL side, I would like to share. Okay, so let me start. So before I start, a few numbers and uh, some important things that happened in the past uh, run or so, I think just to give you some, num some feel, I think some of you are very new, you might wonder how these uh, things go. Uh, so in the last uh, run of our exam, so this March 16 and April 16 is the exam we held in March and April. Okay, in the January semester, we held two exams. One is in March, one is in April. And this is the number of registrations. We had uh, more than 8,000 registrations from local chapters. Okay. So it's a huge shift from before, you know. So NPTEL online courses are being used by local chapters in a big way. Before January, this never happened, okay. Most of our registrations were from open registrations. Everybody was registering. Now, in the January semester, we had a huge change in the number of registrations. So large number of people were registering through their colleges, through local chapters, okay. So I think local chapters play a huge, crucial role. Colleges play a crucial role in making sure that the online courses reach the students. There's no doubt in my mind about it, but this again emphasizes uh, that result. 8,000 is a fairly big number. Uh, Tamil Nadu has been traditionally the largest one because I think IIT Madras has been initially driving this effort. And like I said, once there is a national level launch by the ministry, I do expect all these numbers to go through the roof, okay? So I think, there are two people from TCSU who I'm sure are very nervous about exams, etc. But we are also a little bit nervous about the numbers going up because our staff are here, we are used to these kind of numbers. Suddenly, if one more digit increases here, I'm really scared, you know. <laughs> How are we going to scale uh, everything, you know. So it's, it's very hard for us also. But nevertheless, this is a good trend, I think. I don't want to stop people from doing it. Uh, this is a good trend and I hope this will continue as well. So this is what I think... I, I would really, really emphasize. I'm, I'm very proud of this slide. I, I really like toppers coming out of colleges. And this is uh, the number of toppers who have come out of colleges in local chapters in the January to March 2016 and January to April 2016. Uh, National Engineering College uh, from Koilpati, I think uh, they're here, represented here. They had 40 toppers 
in the courses. Now, a topper in an NPTEL course is not easy. Okay, let me tell you very clearly. Uh, 90 or above you have to get to be a clear topper. And if nobody scores 90 or above in a course, believe me, that happens quite often. <laughs> nobody will score 90 or above in this course. We declare the top 10% 10 per 10 of the performers as toppers. Okay, so being a topper in an NPTEL course is something you and your college have to be really, really proud of. Okay, so it's not easy to produce toppers in NPTEL courses. And this is the list of colleges which have produced toppers. I think Dronacharya was also here. They produced 39 toppers. It's really impressive. And the number you see keeps going down uh, pretty quickly. I want to point out uh, PVP Siddhartha also. The, they have six toppers. They are the, not a very huge institution. But out of the six toppers, is one of their computer science professors who's a topper in programming data structures and algorithms. Okay, so that's a very hard course to top. Okay, <laughs> because that's a programming course. Many of you might have uh, done it, and uh, she's she's got 93 marks in that course, and that's really impressive. You know, when we had a workshop there, they had a big poster with her face in the poster. It was very high. It was very nice to see. So me personally, what I would like all of you to see is toppers from your colleges. Okay, so toppers are the things to focus on. You might say, I have 500 people writing your exam. I'll say, yes, thank you. But like I said, the numbers, I'm more scared about. But if you say, I have produced five toppers, I'm going to be really, really happy. I think that's, that's what is uh, the enabling factor here. That's what's crucial here. So the six toppers, I'm, I'm really happy about. They, they don't have too many students who produce six toppers. That's, that's very impressive. And toppers is what really shines. In fact, in nptel.ac.in slash noc, we give prior, prominence to toppers. We put up the names of toppers and along with their pictures in every course and we would like to see toppers from all across the country and that really shows that our education system is working in some sense, right? If you think about it, there's a course that we organize and toppers are coming from all over the country. So something is right about the system and we have to work on it and make it even better. Okay, so this is the list of toppers and uh, the more toppers from NPTEL local chapter. The, the nearly 200 toppers have come from local chapters, okay? And uh, I mean, you know, so you can, you can look at the names, you know, some of them are really, you know, they're not in big cities, they're not big colleges. For instance, Kamaraj College of Engineering Technology is, is again in Virudhanagar. I don't know, are people from Kamaraj here? Maybe not. Oh, you're here? Okay. So again, uh, from, uh, from uh, not, not a very big city in Tamil Nadu, again, they're, they're producing toppers and they also produce toppers in difficult courses. It's really impressive. Okay, so this is something that, uh, I mean, if, in case as an institution you're worried about things like NAAC accreditation, you know, things like that, so this is something you can be really proud of. And believe me, people in NAAC will respect this. This is something, it's not easy to get uh, something like this. Okay, so that's top us. And uh, here is again uh, a list of different category of certificates. Like I said, uh, so, so see, these, these numbers are changing a little bit. Marks less than 40 is uh, participation. 40 to 59 is uh, successful completion, Elite and Elite plus Gold. And like I said, uh, from NPTEL side, we want to see bigger numbers here. Okay? So the first two columns, Elite plus Gold and Elite, that's where we, that's where we want to see numbers. Okay? So the numbers here, yes, of course, we are very happy that most students are getting exposed to it. But when we produce toppers, believe me, our faculty are more happy. So anyone who teaches the course, when they see that so many people have got Elite plus gold and elite uh, certificates, they're, they're really happy. They think they're producing, they're really their teaching is having an impact. Okay? And here again, uh, you see a big list, NEC, Koil Pati is at the top. You see a lot of people are uh, doing a pretty good job. And that's where I think the local chapter has to make a real impact. Okay? So when, when, you, when you introduce these courses to your students, you have to handhold your students, work with them very closely and push them, really push them to go to this level for any good course. And that's where it's, 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 you're making a huge difference. Just imagine some, some, somebody from your college, his, his face is visible in NPTEL's website showing them as a topper in a course. Okay, at the national level, you've competed with so many other students and you come out on the top. It's something really impressive for the confidence of the student, for your own college and for everybody. Okay, so please do work on that. Like I said, the last column, yes, you can improve. We are happy if you improve that. But really, the first two columns is what we want you to focus on from NPTEL side. Okay, so again, uh, more of a list here. Most, more, more colleges uh, going ahead. This is not the latest version I sent. Or okay. All right. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, okay, so, so I'll come back to this slide later on. I'll move on to the, move, move on with uh, what I think an SPOC should do, what I should think a college should, okay? Uh, so 
how do i see uh, an uh, spoc in a college you know i mean so i think this uh, this acronym stick and somehow i'm personally not a big fan of this spoc acronym <laughs> i don't know we somehow started it and it has stuck uh, so much that we can't change it now and i'm a little bit uh, worried about it I've, i've been thinking of other names and one name that comes to my mind is like an nptel ambassador you know a lot of colleges say they are local nptel coordinators i've seen that also being used in a college but coordinator you know is a nomenclature that we use for ourselves then it becomes confusing who's the coordinator so so i think ambassador is a very nice word a uh, lot of call lot of companies also use it so i would like to think of the spoc in a college as the nptel ambassador in that college and maybe not just for that college and even for the surrounding areas okay so you're working with us and as a person who believes in this online course effort as a person who can propagate this online course effort both inside your college and outside your college among of in the locality okay so that's the kind of person we have in mind uh, you have to be really be motivated by this you have to you have to really get your st- students motivated for this your institution motivated for this people around uh, you motivated for this and i know a lot of uh, uh, spocs here i've met them personally who are so motivated who come up and talk to us and very happy to be a part of this uh, big group and that that's what we see okay so ultimately uh, in the big bridge that nptel has with students the spocs and mentors and faculty in colleges play a huge role in in doing that okay so okay so now uh, some of the some of the some of the things that you have to do as an spoc are not always you know just inspiring and motivating people there are also routine things that you have to do okay pay pay attention to some detail for instance the your college page in the local chapter portal is under your control right there are things that you can upload there information that you can put there images that you can put there you have to first do that once you become a local chapter i think many of you have already done it maybe the newer local chapters have to do this now you have to go and update the information that our local chapter page has about your college immediately okay that's very important make sure that it's up to date your logo your logo can be put there right your logo can be put there all of that has to be correct please do that okay and uh, make sure that you are added to the group okay there is a google group of spoc so many of you actively follow that i think it's a very active group right lots of email exchange happens maybe a bit too active sometimes you fish like <laughs> too many emails are coming in but nevertheless it's an important uh, uh, google groups to be part of make sure that you read it make sure that you participate in it very actively because a lot of our announcements go on that google groups okay so we try to make sure that some of the announcements are made more prominently but nevertheless uh, we have kept it an open group it's not a moderated group for now uh, the numbers are still uh, reasonable but please post any questions that you have on that group uh, if it is a specific question that's specific to only your college you might just want to write to nptel at iitm you don't have to post it on the group okay but in case you see that this is an issue that many colleges might be interested in then it's good to post it on the uh, group okay so in your own judgment please make this distinction if you have a simple question about you know my student did not get a hall ticket it's probably not necessary to put it on the spoc group okay so you can send a mail to nptel at iitm which is also a very actively watched uh, watched uh, email id you will get a reply soon but in case you have a question about you know in this course Uh, these lectures are not very clear well, that's something which affects a lot of colleges you can put it on the spoc group things like that okay so you should make sure you use your judgment on that but this is important your active participation in ensuring that your college details are up to date on the local chapter portal and participating in the spoc group these two are very very important okay so a few other steps that you might want to do and this is also this also goes a long way in helping your students actively participate in nptel courses is to get the content from nptel on hard disks and then lock it up in a cupboard right no <laughs> no don't lock it up in a cupboard please <laughs> what is the next step the most important step is to make sure that that content is served on your lan okay so there are a few steps there some of them are technical maybe if you have a local system admin who can help you but the technical aspect is very very easy you have to install you have to get a computer install some servers on that computer and put it up on the inter- on the on your local lan it's it's easy to do we have some basic instructions for it we also have people who can help you with it okay this thing is sloping it's falling so uh, so please please uh, make sure that that content is on your lan it's very easy to do i think many of you have wifi on your college campuses it's easy for students to access this content once it's on your lan they don't have to go on the internet you can still keep youtube blocked you know 
all of that is still uh, possible. So please, please make sure that you do this. This is a very important step. In case you need help, please call us. We'll help you in how to do the installation and all that. Okay, so very important to do. So this is something. Okay, one more thing I should uh, tell you about. This is our content keeps on increasing. Okay, so just because you get a hard drive at one point, don't think that you have all the content. Okay, every month we add about, I think the way it's going, like a terabyte or something, we add every month. Okay, so it's a huge <laughs> amount of information that gets added every month right now. So please make sure that your content is also up to date. And for local chapters, we do updation anytime you ask. Okay, so please make sure your content is up to date and it's possible for you to add to the existing content. So in your server, when you're installing, don't exactly install nine terabytes, you know, have some additional space or at least possibilities to have additional space because in the next three, four years, this content is going to double as way, way as we, which we are going. Okay. So make sure that you keep enough space there and keep adding to it. Every month I would say you keep updating the content. Okay. And for the online courses that your students are doing actively, you should make sure that the videos are updated as and when they are released. Okay, whenever we release videos on the uh, online courses portal, we also put up downloadable versions on nptel.ac.in or it's a YouTube video, you know how to download YouTube videos. It's easy to download YouTube videos today. You have to download those videos and make sure that they are also available on your local LAN. Once it's available on your local LAN, students are able to see it without going on the internet. So you've downloaded it once and everybody sees it. Okay, so it's very important to do. Please use some system admin help or something for that and you can also ask us. Uh, make sure that you do that and keep your content up to date because the content keeps on increasing. Okay, so here is something, some sort of a structure that we suggest for how the local chapter can run. Okay, so of, one, of course this is only a suggestion. You might have your own way in which you're doing it. Uh, I'll ask you to share some of these experiences as we go along, but this is a suggestion that I have. I would say you should have one SPOC who's kind of going across multiple departments, but he or she needs to be helped by individuals in a few departments. Okay, so it's, pos it's impossible otherwise to keep track of how things are going. If there's only one person for the entire college or institution, it's just too big. That's one thing. And also I think the specializations, the courses we offer, the titles we provide will not make sense to only one, someone who knows only one department or one branch. You know, we might have civil engineering courses, mechanical engineering courses, are these basic courses, are these advanced courses. It's not easy for people to figure that out. So you need people from multiple departments at least uh, multiple streams in some sense, so that they can make sense of the kind of courses that we are offering. Okay, so that's very important. And uh, we also suggest, you know, this, this is one thing we have not pushed too much, but I'll really suggest that you try and get student volunteers. Okay, now uh, you, you, can, you can give them, uh, you know, official uh, names if you like, as student representatives of the NPTEL local chapter. We are very happy to involve with, uh, engage with them. Uh, we can also engage with them in some official way if you like. Uh, so this is something that will help you a lot. You know, students tend to be a little bit more resourceful sometimes doing some of the tasks that you might uh, set them, you know, downloading a certain video, putting it up in some web page. Students might be able to do it more routinely than, uh, you, you, than you might be able to. You might have some additional tasks, etc. in your college. Students are relatively free. They might be able to do this. So please try and get student volunteers into this uh, system as well. Uh, so that way you have uh, everybody working together and uh, that helps uh, helps things a lot okay okay so now uh, right now we are we are in this state okay so you are an SPOC of a local chapter you're, you're you're trying to get online courses popular in your college and we are before the run of a course the course run starts on July 18th we are on July 2nd okay so we have two weeks to go before the run of the course okay this is a crucial time in my opinion Okay, as an SPOC and a local chapter, you have to spend some time in this two weeks to understand what courses are on offer. Okay, so this is very, very important. Okay, so we, we always keep saying there are 93 courses. All 93 courses are not the same. They are not, first of all, in all no, they're not all in the same department. Okay, clearly they're not in the same department. They are not all of the same level of mathematical difficulty. They are not all of the same, you know, same year or same uh, semester. So th they're all different types of courses that will be appealing to different types of students in different stages in your college. Okay. They're not all the same courses. So you, you, you cannot, for instance, say here is a poster which has the list of 93 courses students will take what they like. Okay. So that's, that's not a very good path in my opinion. Okay. So you know your students best. Okay. So, so what the first homework to do, which is very important is 
the SPOC and the local chapter, the people who are involved in the local chapter should definitely look at the courses very closely and decide to focus on a few courses for which you will help your students uh, through that semester. Okay, so this is very crucial because like I said, we just don't want numbers, we want toppers. Okay, if you just generally introduce students to courses, they're not going to become toppers in those courses. Okay, so you, this initial homework you do in these two weeks to understand what courses are on offer. What, what is the difficulty level of this course? Is this course doable by our students? Okay, is this going to be an understandable course? Are, 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 all, are our students going to be able to top this course? Okay, that's the kind of work that you have to do in these two weeks. Okay, and then maybe focus not on all 93, maybe on a few courses, which as a local chapter, you will actively support your students do. Okay, and then you have to set yourself some targets. You have to make sure that at least a few toppers you'll produce in that course. That's very important. This step is, I think, a very crucial step. So after you go back, I would say you study these courses, make sure that you understand what these courses are, and then maybe even have a workshop for your own students, introducing them to these online course, show them the portal, how they can log in, how they can register, and then talk to them about these courses. What are these courses? This course is uh, an important course for your career, et cetera, et cetera. You have to make that pitch to them and also tell them that the college will help you do these courses. We'll appoint a mentor as a faculty, a faculty member as a mentor will help you do really well in this course, you register for this course. Now this step is a crucial step that you have to do in your college. If you don't do that, if you just say, okay, these are the courses you register on your own and you do whatever you want, it's very unlikely that you'll be producing toppers. Okay, so for producing toppers, you have to really actively handhold your students and it starts now, the process starts now. You have to look at the course, understand what the course is, and then advise your students, counsel your students on why they should do what course and how they should go about doing it and how you will help them in that course. Okay, so local chapters which do this process are considerably more successful than local chapters which say, these are the 93 courses, whatever you do, we'll support you. In support you in just providing internet access, etc. Internet access today is not the most crucial thing local chapters are providing. Okay, the handholding that you do is the most important thing. Okay, so many local chapters use this also. The other method they follow is, in the first run of the course, they ask their faculty members to do the course. Make sure that they are comfortable with that material. And the next time the course is being rerun, they enroll their students into it. So that there is a faculty member who is well qualified to guide the students through those courses. Okay? And then faculty members maybe keep doing newer and newer courses. So they also become better at it. They can also guide more and more students. So th you should have an internal plan like this. And I don't know what the best plan is. I'm just suggesting one such plan. Whatever works in your college is great. And later on, I'll ask some of the colleges which have produced toppers here, who are here already, how, how is their system working? Okay, so they, they'll be able to talk about it and maybe you'll get some ideas as well. Okay, uh, so this is uh, very important, publicizing the courses, not just for the sake of getting numbers, but for the sake of getting toppers, okay, identifying the good students who are going to benefit from this. Okay, next is the enrollment. Like I mentioned, the enrollment is a simple process. You go on the website and you click join button, but then there are things in that form which need attention. Particularly the local chapter part of it needs a lot of attention. Make sure that they pick your college as a local chapter and they enter the college roll number so that we can give that information back to you later on and you know who is doing it. Okay, so it's very important. Uh, yeah, so, so as an SPOC or, so, or a local chapter or a faculty or a principal even of a college, I would even suggest that you enroll in a course. Okay, so you might say, you know, I'm offended. How can you ask me? I'm already a teacher. You're asking me to learn. I myself have enrolled in several online courses I've learned from them. Okay, so learning is a continuous process. Everybody learns. There's no reason to stop learning. The reason why I'm asking you to do is, when you do that, first of all, you'll learn something. And I promise you, you'll find some course in this 93 which you like. Okay, there will be nothing. It's unlikely that there are even humanities courses, soft skill courses. You will find something that you like. Okay, simply enroll in it just for the fun of it and go through it. It gives you a solid understanding of the processes. What is the meaning of a lecture? What is the meaning of a lesson? What is an assignment? How do you submit assignment? What is a deadline? What happens if you miss a deadline? What is a proctored exam? How do you register for it? You've gone through that yourself once. Okay, there's nothing like that. You have fantastic experience after that. And then when you guide your students, you'll really uh, be in a good shape. So for instance, in uh, Geetam University in uh, Vizag, I think, I don't know if people are here from Vizag, maybe they're not here. There is one uh, SPOC there. He has four certificates, if I'm not wrong. All of them are in programming courses. And he's won, got Elite Plus gold medal and everything. Okay, so it's a really uh, impressive feat from him. And when he goes and tells students, you know, you do this, you really benefit. 
students will listen to you right so otherwise if, if they say you know you are not doing it why should i do it just doesn't work okay so it's very very important for you to do it as well it first of all it tells you about the processes you understand the mechanism what is the difference between an online course and a regular course you understand everything and you also understand how to help your students go through this and become toppers okay so it's very important to do that uh, i mentioned about choice of courses this is really really crucial okay so what i'm going to do like i said there are various types you know are these courses math intensive are these courses core or elective are they industry related are they going to be little easier to do in some sense all these choices you have to help your students make so what i'm going to do is uh, maybe go through the list of courses a little bit and then say a few words about uh, uh each of these courses just based on my experience just to give you an idea of why these things are important this one yeah. the list of courses i think uh, pratap already flashed it for you i'll just go through that a little bit and i'll also ask uh, madhavan mukun to come up here and talk about his course a little bit after i go through this rajesh is also here okay yeah uh, i think deepak also walked in so i'll ask uh, some of the faculty members to talk briefly about uh, their courses that are coming up in july uh but before that i just want to go through the list to tell you i mean how how to go about thinking about it I, i told you to look at it i'm sure you will have your own way of looking at it i'll just walk you through those courses and highlight some of them and say what, what how how it's going to run etc okay so so as you go through this course the first thing is of course discipline wise uh so so if you look at chemistry there's one okay so let me step back a little bit these are the 10 hour four week courses okay so you have to start uh, distinguishing based on that first there are four week courses eight week courses and 12 week courses uh, first thing you have to see is how many of your students are going to be doing the 12 week course which is kind of long right it starts on july 18th it goes till uh, something like october first or second week are there holidays in the middle will students not be able to do a significant part of it those are the decisions only you will know believe me the holidays in west bengal or up are very different from the holidays in tamil nadu in a particular semester okay so you have to be able to look at the college calendar and see what is the duration which is ideal for your students okay the four week course for instance starts on july 18th and ends in august 20 okay so it's very quick and eight week uh, is the most successful uh, duration usually most colleges like the eight week course it's the ideal content and it finishes well before you know starts on july 18th it uh, ends sometime in the september second week the exams are also over in september and then students can focus on any other semester exam or anything like that so they really like the eight week content so first thing you have to look at is look at the run of the course and then see your college calendar and figure out which matches best but not as nice about a 12 week course is you really comprehensively learn something you know i mean it's a it's a it's good content it's sizable content you really comprehensively learn something so there are advantages to everything you know that's why we have all these multiple options otherwise you wouldn't have multiple options so please make sure you look at it and uh, first decide which are the which is the time duration which is good for you and for your students as well so after that uh, once you look at a particular duration then you have to look at discipline okay so here is where i think uh, just having one spoc will hurt you you know i mean you look at even 10 week courses you have chemistry computer science uh, design earth science electrical engineering humanities mathematics mechanical engineering even a multidisciplinary course okay not uh, i mean one person is it's very hard for one person to know what all these areas are what are all this jargon is is very hard so that's why you need to have a few faculty from different areas working with the spoc to go through this list and maybe isolate some three or four which you will suggest for your students and for yourself okay so now that exercise is very important uh, if you go through this uh, i mean you can quickly identify which are the maybe the basic courses and which are probably more mathematically oriented courses which are very intense courses for instance software testing i don't know you have to go and see how it is being done there are various ways of doing software testing one could be extremely theoretical you can go into great uh, theoretical depth or maybe he is doing more practical things so you have to go and see what is the type of material that are they are covering so you have to see the introduction page you have to see the video introduction video of the instructor okay the page that i showed you in online course you should go see it and then get a sense of is this course going to be very theoretical for instance introduction to cryptology again cryptology can be done in so many different ways okay just because of the title you can't decide anything you have to go there and see what the instructor is saying okay a few of the instructors are here i'll let them speak as well uh but you have to see and understand what the course content is okay so quite often there is this confusion you know i have done introduction to cryptology in my university okay so now believe me uh, even though we have some standard university syllabus what one person teaches is very different from 
what another person teaches. And particularly in IITs where we don't have a fixed syllabus for anything, what one person teaches will be completely different from what another person teaches. Okay, so don't just go by names. The names don't mean anything. Okay, so introduction to cryptology is a name. You, you, you cannot understand much from the course from the name. You have to go see the weekly content. Only then you will know what is going on. Okay, same thing I'll say for almost every course. Uh, so, so go through, watch the introduction and make sure that, it's, uh, that you understand what it is. The humanities courses are also particularly interesting. Uh, you should encourage your students to do humanities courses as well. Ask them to go through uh, what these things are. Okay, so this is very important. The last course down here, I'll look at it and highlight it a little bit. It's biology for engineers and non-biologists. Okay, so that is likely to be an open course which is for everybody. You know? Biology for engineers is, is an open course. It's for uh, all disciplines and it's probably a slightly easier course and you can see the content and uh, understand what it is. Okay, so please do this, uh, please do this exercise. It's, it's, it's very, very important. And then uh, here are the 12 week courses. Uh, 18 of them are there coming up in this July semester. You have basic courses. Once again, look at the discipline. You know, there's so many disciplines. There are two pages, set, one page full of courses. There are various disciplines here. Uh, we have aerospace, chemical, civil, computer science. Uh, even in computer science, there are three different courses. I want to highlight a couple of courses. One is artificial intelligence, uh, search methods for problem solving. Professor uh, Deepak Kamani is here. He'll uh, talk about it uh, hopefully a little while. And another course is mobile computing. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this course because it's likely once again that you'll hear about this course uh, soon enough. Uh, this course is actually on Android programming. Okay, Android development. Okay, how to do uh, Android development. Uh, we are partnering with, uh, we're trying to partner. I think we've already partnered. The administrative things have to take over. We're partnering with Google for this. So Google will also be, uh, so many of you know, Google plays a very active role in Android development. So uh, Google is partnering with us in this course. It's a 12-week course. Uh, it will start with uh, basic Java and then slowly peop take people into Android development. It's Android, as you might know, is a big ticket job course. It's a, a lot of people can get jobs with it. So it's a pop pretty popular course. Think about it. And electrical engineering, you have various different uh, things. You have uh, basic courses, advanced courses, etc. And humanities, we have uh, different courses. There's one in mechanical engineering. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else I should uh, talk about. Physics of Materials is a course that uh, Professor Pratap is offering. Uh, maybe he'll also say a few words about that course itself. So various different courses are here that appeal to various different kinds of students. Okay? So please do this homework. Make sure you understand what these courses are. And uh, you can present them to your students in a, in a good way. Okay? So these are, like I said, the eight-week courses. These are the most popular. Okay? Our most popular courses are eight-week courses. And you'll see we have 59 of them. Okay, so quite a few numbers of them. And again, all disciplines are covered, various uh, different uh, topics are here. I mean, I'm not going to go through them in uh, great detail. I'll just highlight a couple of things to tell you that you can't just blindly throw this list at your students. Okay? There's a course here called Modern Algebra. Okay, it's by Professor Manindra Agarwal from IIT Kanpur. I don't know how many of you have heard about Professor Manindra Agarwal from IIT Kanpur. Few of you, maybe? No, maybe not. Okay. So it says Modern Algebra. Okay? So what do you think that course will be? Okay, so it's going to be mathematically intense, right? So you have to make the judgment. You have to again go and see and look at it. But, you know, this course might still be accessible to some of the more bright students in your college. So you don't want to just rule it out, but go and see what the course is being pitched at, okay? So is he going to be pitching the course at for everybody? Or is he going to say it's a specialized course? You have to go see that, then make your judgment on whether or not this course is good for your students, okay? And for instance, there are other courses. There is Programming Data Structures and Algorithms in Python, which is again being offered by Madhavan. So that course is more or less pitched for everybody. Okay, I'm, I think I'm right. He'll, he'll also come and talk about it. Okay, so you, you have to again make your judgment on that. On the other hand, Algorithms for Big Data. Okay, it's very tempting. Big Data is a very famous word today. But believe me, that's a slightly specialized course. Okay, it's not even a basic algorithms course. It's slightly an advanced algorithms course, which is tuned towards big data. So that's the kind of judgment you have to make. Inside computer science, there are these different courses. There is modern algebra, there's programming in C++, there's programming in Python, and then algorithms for big data and artificial intelligence, etc. So you have to classify them as what year students can probably do it. There is some information in the course introduction page, but for your college, you have to make that judgment, okay? So since uh, our faculty are here now, I think it's a good point for me to invite the faculty, uh, for each of them to come here and speak briefly about their course. Uh, I would like to start with uh, Rajesh Kumar.
who will uh, maybe say a few words about his upcoming course on language and mind. Is that right? Applied linguistics, I'm sorry. Okay. So we'll start with him and then move on to the other faculty. Yes, Raj. You want to go later? It's okay. <laughs> The course is ready, so I can talk about it anytime. It's not a, not a problem. Uh, as you have seen, it's a part of the 30 weeks, 30 hours course for 12 weeks. Uh, the I'll, I'll tell you very briefly the basics of this course. And as Andrew was telling you, please do encourage people in your colleges and uh, centers to take these courses. And here is why you should you should encourage people to take these courses. The name is Applied Linguistics. So give me a minute to tell you what linguistics is. Linguistics is the science of language. Uh, it, it, I, I ask you to ask yourself two questions. How did you learn the language that you speak? Answer to this question is not simple. What linguists do is to find out underlying algorithm of learning language through natural process. And that underlying algorithm when it has been found out through the science of language is applied in various domains for problem solving. And if one domain which is going to be interesting to you is language teaching. So it's for both when we want to learn a new language and when we want to teach a new language in both the domains the findings of the science of language is going to be relevant. And I'm sure in all your colleges, you do have a domain and component on teaching at least English. And the findings of this are going to be helpful in doing so. We are going to be available all the time online, through emails, through uh, all kinds of contact information is given there. Uh, at any point in time, whether or not you are enrolled in the course, if you want to know more about this, Please get in touch with NPTEL or us directly. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Talks for two minutes and get claps. I spoke for so long, I never got a single clap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe uh, Deepak. My name is Deepak Khimani. I work here in the Department of Computer Science. And I'm teaching this course, which is listed between civil and computer science here. It's actually a computer science course called Artificial Intelligence Search Methods for Problem Solving. It's a course which, we, which I offered last year as well. And uh, last year, it was a 15-week course. And this year, Andrew and Bharti have said that it's too much. So we have cut it down to a 12-week course. But we have also added those last three weeks of lectures in case students who are interested. Now, it's a very basic course in computer science. It's the first course in artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence, as you know, everyone is talking about Google or you know Facebook or whatever. But I would like to just clarify one thing, is that you should not confuse this course with machine learning. Because very many, whenever many people talk about AI nowadays, they say it is, they talk about, start talking about machine learning. But this course is not about machine learning. It's a very fundamental course. In fact, there are two separate courses on machine learning being offered, one by, I think, Sureshna Sarkar and one called Reinforcement Learning by my colleague here, Ravindran. So if you want to do machine learning, those are the courses. This course talks about basic problem solving, essentially. How can you solve a problem? What are the methods that you can use? And basically, they are trial and error based search kind of methods. So for example, if you are given a new puzzle, you try out different, different possibilities and then find a solution. So this course is mostly about that. It's a first course in artificial intelligence, any student who has basic exposure to data structures should be able to do the course essentially. Okay, so one thing I would like to say about the course or in courses in general in NPTEL is that we find that we have a large initial enrollment and then that peters off very rapidly essentially. And part of the reason is that students are not able to sustain interest, maybe they have other things and so on. But I'm hoping this time that since you are from colleges and you're going to kind of guide your students, you must encourage them to be more active 
online. So we have this forum in which you can pose a question and anybody can answer, including other students, and we also try to answer. And if students are more active in the forum, they are more likely to be surviving throughout the course, essentially. So it's a 12-week course, and uh, uh, we cover the basic algorithms for problem solving. Essentially. So if there are any more questions, I will take them up during lunch. Thanks. Madhav. So Madhavan is doing two courses, and uh, he'll talk about both. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so, uh, so as you can see, I'm, I'm listed twice on this page. So at the bottom, there's design and analysis of algorithms. And uh, halfway down the page, there is this course on programming data structures and algorithms in Python. So the algorithms course, the one at the bottom, is actually been uh, uh, conducted on NPTEL more than once earlier. And uh, so it's a fairly, what I would consider a fairly stable course. Uh, it's a fundamental course in computer science. And I think many students uh, do need to have a good background in this. I've tried to make it accessible. And uh, one of the things which is makes it a little bit different from maybe uh, the way algorithms is done in regular courses is that there is a, uh, a programming assignment associated with each week's material. So there are about five or six, uh, I mean, there are weekly quizzes which are multiple choice, but there are five or six reasonably interesting and hopefully doable but challenging programming assignments. So uh, like Deepak was saying, I think one of the main things that uh, challenges we face in this kind of offline mode of teaching is how to ensure that students stay focused and uh, keep up. And one of the things that they really need to do in any course, but I think especially in these kind of courses, is you need to work on problems. I think you can't just read or absorb passively the theory and hope that you understand. So unless you actually apply what you have done in a concrete setting, uh, I think it you don't really derive the full benefit. So I think that's one place where if we have this intermediary uh, group of uh, faculty who are, all of you are represent, I think it will be a, probably a good way to make sure the engagement is more effective and students stay you know, focused. Because also the thing is that it is possible, thanks to the material being available, to catch up. right? But if you kind of get this feeling that, oh, I missed for whatever reason this week, and then I, shall, I will never get back, so I'll drop out. I think that we should try to minimize and try to make sure that people do actually stay to as far as possible on track with the material. So I think it will be great if uh, this uh, interaction could be improved in that sense. As Deepak said, I mean, the forum is there. There are a lot of avenues to interact. But the students must have the energy, enthusiasm, and the stamina to do it. <laughs> and so that's the main thing. So the other course I won't talk about too much because uh, it's still work in progress. Uh, I, I'm trying to, OK, so honestly speaking, I have uh, you know, had a lot of discussions with people about how programming should be taught. Everybody has their own opinion how programming should be taught. So I then finally, when uh, this question was put to me by NPTEL, I decided, OK, now having given a lot of theory to other people about how programming should be taught, let me try and activate my own theory and teach it the way I think it should be taught. Now, it's not guaranteed to be the only way to teach it well, but I hope, again, it'll have, it'll, it should have a substantial amount of programming. You can't teach programming without pe people actually writing programs. So again, it will require a fair amount of interaction on part of the students to learn the material. And the advantage, I hope, of using a language like Python is that you can get past the initial difficulty of learning a lot of syntax, which is what happens with languages like Java or C++, and actually start learning concepts much faster. And this is what I would like to emphasize in that course. So in a sense, there will be actually a lot of overlap between these two courses, but one in the sense that some amount of basic algorithms will come into the programming course. But I think that without teaching interesting things, programming on its own is a very dull activity. It's like learning how to type or you know handwriting or something like that. I mean, you can't just keep exercising your knowledge of semicolons and open brackets without having interesting problems to solve. And at the same time, if the language is so complicated that you can't solve any interesting problems, then it's an 
end in itself just to understand how to write a program. So we want to strike a middle ground where quickly people can write interesting programs and start working on things which are relevant. This is for all in a way, but it is definitely aimed at computer science students. I mean, there are, again, divergent opinions on how programming should be taught to people from other disciplines and what should be the emphasis. So from that perspective, it is very much a computer science oriented course, but it is for all. I mean, it is for a beginning person. I have taught this course in a conventional way to people who are studying applied mathematics. So it's not that I'm coming at this from a completely, uh, you know, vacuous point of view. So I do know it can be taught to people who have no programming background and who are not specialists in programming. But I'd like to emphasize that this is not going to be something which, for example, people who are, so I'm not going to teach things like scientific computing or something like that, you know, how to write eigenvalue solving problems. So, okay, so, okay. so I, anyway, so I hope that uh, all of you will uh, uh, keep your students well informed and uh, well engaged and that uh, this in initiative of NPTEL will only continue to grow. Thanks. Uh, we have a few more faculty members who have joined us. I believe Diman is here. Yeah, Diman. So uh, Diman is offering uh, one course this time. He'll talk uh, briefly about that course. Is it in this page? Is it a no, it is not in this page. It's a 12 week course. Yeah. It's a 12 week course? Yeah, 20. 20. 20, is it? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank you. I am Dhiman Chatterjee from Mechanical Engineering Department. And myself and my colleague, Professor Shamit Bakshi, we are offering a course. We can see that fluid dynamics and turbo machines. This course is in intended for the undergraduate students and also the master students who would like to, I mean, refresh the uh, basic concepts and learn some of the details, and maybe also for practicing engineers. So this course essentially starts from the fundamentals of fluid dynamics. We talk about what is fluid to start with, and then talk about the different conservation equations, the mass and momentum equations. And then we move on to certain concepts like boundary layer theory or the pressure drop. This first part or the first module on fluid dynamics is covered by my colleague, Professor Shamit Bakshi, who is also from Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Madras. In the second part, we talk about the fluid machines or in particular turbo machines. The name turbo machines may appear a little unfamiliar, but we all know the examples in our everyday life, pumps, turbines, fan in our homes. So these are all examples of turbo machines. So we start with what constitutes a turbo machine and let's say not a, a piston pump, which is a positive displacement machine. So we bring out this ex uh, through some examples through some drawings, and then we talk about what are the uh, operating principles, how, to, how does the energy transfer take place from the, let's say the blade to the fluid, or from the fluid to the blade as the case may be. So the first part of the second module that is on turbo machines, we talk more about the general approach. And in the second part, we talk about the specific machines. For example, we talk about pumps because that is a very common use. There are a lot of industrial applications and we can solve the principles. From the first principles, we can solve the problems. In the second part, we have also the hydraulic turbines, steam and gas turbines. In all these cases, both for the first module on fluid dynamics and for the second module on turbo machines, we actually give our in-depth coverage accompanied by solved problems, we solve it, and also give tutorial problems every week. So we hope that a student who takes, let's say, all these courses I mean, and tutorials seriously would have a very good grasp on the subject, and then can go on to the advanced courses on fluid dynamics or advanced courses on turbo machines if required. And I hope that the students, if they take it, they will also enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks, Damon. Uh, I think we have Professor Suresh Kumar. Yeah, please. Yes. So he's uh, he doing the eight four-week course, no? Yeah, the the biology biology for engineers and other non-biologists. Yes, it's all the way in the bottom. Sorry. Oh. 
Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I just finished recording of the last lecture for uh, this particular MOOC. That's why I'm wearing this type of shirt. You know, they, they recommend that we wear pastel colored shirts for appropriate uh, reception on the video. Uh, I finished that, I said I, I was more interested in hearing from you uh, as to what your thoughts are and that's the reason I attended. When I came in, I kind of got hijacked into telling you something about the course, which I'll do <laughs> pretty much uh, the same as what is said in the introductory video. See, this course, uh, Biology for Engineers and Other Non-Biologists, Bend it, okay, fine. Am I better audible now? Okay. Should I shout more or? Okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'm able to see better, which is which is much nicer. Uh, okay. The title title is Biology for Engineers and Other Non-Biologists. Uh, I'm sure that um, some of the institutions are offering some such courses already. Uh, we at IIT Madras have offered this course for the past uh, 15 years at least. Okay. That is because um, we all have this feeling that uh, it is the century for biology and uh, a lot of great things are expected from biology in this century and so on. You know, we ourselves are biological beings. Okay? We haven't understood ourselves much and therefore the level of manipulations that are possible with us are rather limited at this stage, although it may appear large. And irrespective of the field that you are in, okay, I have a bias towards engineers because I deal with an engineering set of students. Irrespective of what engineer you are, it is very highly likely, or irrespective of which field you work in, it is very likely that your contributions, say five years down the line, 10 years down the line, will be in a biologically related aspect in your own field maybe, okay? Uh, and to prepare you for that, uh, prepare the students for that, we offer this course. Uh, we felt uh, this course is ripe for offering to all, uh, and irrespective of the field that you're in, you'd be benefited by this. This, the, uh, my colleague, Dr. Madhulika Dikshit, she's a biologist. I'm a biological engineer. I'm basically a chemical engineer from IIT Madras, BTEC and then went on to do various things. You know, somebody described me as taking the longest route to medicine and so on. So you <laughs> I'm in the Department of Biotechnology now. I fully realize the importance of knowing biological principles to achieve uh, the various different fantastic possibilities at times. Okay. And this course gives you the very basics of those. We look at some fundamental molecular aspects uh, that you would need to know to be able to first understand, get over the fear of biology. Many engineers fear biology, okay? They may not accept it, but essentially it's a fear. They don't like the terms, uh, mainly because the way they were introduced to biology in school and so on and so forth. You memorize this and that's it. Memorization is a very good skill, definitely. Um, you know, without memory, you cannot dance, you cannot sing and so on and so forth. Very essential skill. But at the same time, there's a lot, uh, there are more aspects to it. Um, and biology is, a field in itself in every, I mean, in, in all rights. And it's a very useful field. This will provide you with the very basic principles just in 10 hours, and that was a challenge to do. We normally do this course over an, enti an entire semester. Oh, I was supposed to touch this, okay. Entire semester, and um, that's a good challenge, okay. Uh, I very briefly would like to mention one other course. I just finished. Uh, uh, NPTEL online certification course on bioreactors that was earlier done. I'm basically a bio, biological engineer, uh, which is also available on the NPTEL site if you're interested. We will most likely run the course again sometime later if, if it is appropriate. And then you could get benefited by the course, which is entirely on bioreactors again in 10 hours. That is, bioreactors is an aspect that I did research on for my PhD and subsequently after that when I began my independent research. And it kind of became uh, a mature subject, uh, mature aspect. Uh, any major um, development in that needed to come from the industry and so on and so forth. And uh, it has gone through a complete cycle, a complete uh, developmental cycle. And it was a challenge to give that in 10 hours. We've done that, it was well received. 
uh, hopefully you'd have a chance to look at it again. Thank you. Uh, Okay, I think we have one more faculty member, only one more, I think Professor Pratap Haridas. We'll have him talk about his offering two courses in the upcoming July semester. So now, a couple of things that Professor Suresh Kumar mentioned, in case you or your college has participated in their, his course before, either bioreactors or thinking about participating in any of these courses, please do take the time to meet them and talk to them. If they are around, they might give you more hints. Pratap. So there are a couple of courses I'm, uh, one I'm offering directly, one I'm coordinating. Uh, the, in the 30 hour uh, course you will see down there, uh, the closer to the end there is a physics of materials uh, course. Uh, so it's a core course in our department, metallurgical and materials engineering. Uh, but uh, actually a lot of uh, uh, materials and uh, uh, materials engineering departments, even electrical engineering depa department students often need to take, uh, and, in, and physics students often need to take a course on solid state physics. Um, and uh, in my opinion, as, I mean, both uh, when I learned this uh, this material as a student, and also when I prepared myself to teach this course, uh, the it's uh, difficult to find the book at the right level to learn this uh, uh, subject. Uh, there are you know books which are appropriate for 12 standard students, and then suddenly it, there's a big jump. In between, there seems to be a big gap, and the other books are at a, you know they assume a lot of things. They assume that you know a lot of things, and they deliver at that level. And uh, so this course actually bridges that gap very well, uh, or at least that's the intent. The intent is that. Uh, so anybody who's, in a, who's basically done the first year undergrad uh, courses of you know, basic physics and maths can take this course. Uh, the idea is, you know, this talks about why materials have those, the properties that they do. So that's the idea. So normally we simply know that you know, a metal is a good conductor of heat, good conductor of electricity. Uh, a ceramic is not a good conductor of uh, electricity. Uh, things like that. Uh, but we, uh, in this course, we are trying to understand in a, from a first principles approach, starting from say an atomic level or even you know band structure level, uh, how, the, how do these properties come about? In fact, why do even bands come about? We, we you know, normally we simply say conduction band, valence band in all our school education and we uh, you know, have a lot of information related to that. But we rarely talk about why should there be even a band? Why, why does the material have a band? Atoms are there separately, why do the bands appear? So all those things are discussed here. Uh, a lot of you know new uh, concepts are presented. They are built up from basics, and you know derivations are made. Uh, no assumptions are made on prior knowledge ac except some basic uh, you know physics and math uh, uh, thing. So that is one. Uh, the other course is here, which will come under uh, general. Let me just see here. Multidisciplinary. Ah, introduction to research. The multidisciplinary course, uh, the fourth from the bottom. Uh, so. We actually have uh, several faculty involved in it, and uh, that list is not really the correct list. Anyway, so uh, uh, that uh, course is an, uh, it's basically even in our uh, institute, all incoming MS and PhD students uh, have to take something like an introduction to research kind of course. It's called different things in different places. Uh, basic idea is, you know, students come with a different backgrounds. Some have done small projects, some have done elaborate projects before this. Uh, this is their first uh, experience in carrying out research. So we talk of a lot of things, you know, what is research? We have a lot of uh, discussion with several faculty and uh, this uh, 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 Professor Anant also has a class on it. What is just research? What are some ideas uh, related to research? We talk about, uh, you know, uh, data analysis, uh, how you do data analysis, how do you do uh, computational work? Um, then uh, how do you make a presentation? How, uh, I mean, how do you make a technical presentation? How do you write a journal paper? What are those important things that you need to know to understand what it is? So things like this, uh, how do you do experimental work? What are, what are experimental skills you should have? Uh, what about safety in the laboratory? All these things which are you know, necessary for a researcher to have. Um, and it's something that it would be nice to have research students introduced to it uh, early in their uh, uh, you know, uh, career uh, as a researcher in the university. Of course, they may not use everything in the first uh, semester that they are there, but it's nice for them to know that this, these are all the aspects that are involved and that it is all available in an organized way here. Maybe uh, as they proceed into their research, you know, second year or something, they may they may want to revisit some of this material and uh, utilize it. So this is a general purpose course. Uh, about uh, you know seven eight faculty are involved in it, uh, and we try to present it across uh, 20 hours. We'll also have something on uh, intellectual property. Uh, we'll have something on design of experiments and so on. So that's uh, those are the two courses. Thank you. Okay, so we are running a uh, little bit short of time, I think, but I think Professor Mangal Sundar to wants to say something. So we'll yeah, let him say I, it. Need, I need to say this. Sorry, I sort of intruded into this. Pratap, I don't want to embarrass you, and, but I still have to say this. 
Here is the message which I received and many of us received from Douglas Hofstadter, who is a very famous uh, writer and a physicist who has written many books and one of them, the most famous books is the Godel, Escher and Bach. And the other one is, uh, I believe it's Metamagical Themas, if I remember. Mathematical Themes was written as a pun called the Metamagical Themas. He's a very, very famous writer and a physicist from Indiana University. See, over the past few years, for few months, I've been helping my friend Indu Satija, a professor of physics at George Mason University in Virginia, in polishing the chapters of her book called The Butterfly in the Quantum World. But since I left solid state physics essentially 40 years ago, I had forgotten some of the key ideas involving reciprocal space and Bruhan zones, which are needed in a couple of her chapters. I therefore went to the web to refresh myself, and I happened upon YouTube videos of your lectures at IIT Madras, especially numbers 27 and 30, and this reference is to Professor Pratap Haridas's videos, and found them very helpful and enjoyable. I just wanted to let you know that your easy-going teaching style and your elegant hand-done hand drawings were very much appreciated by this viewer in far-off America. Warmest wishes to you from Bloomington, Indiana. I have not read the citations that we have received for many, many other faculty members here. There are many. We will slowly put them up. But since Pradab happens to be here, we decided that we should read that up. But there are hundreds of citations like this from various other people, and therefore it's important for us to enjoy what we learn. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mangal. So uh, we are a little short on time. I think uh, I want to go through some of the other things a little faster. Then guest login was already. Okay, so this is a different presentation. Sorry. Move to the right presentation. Okay, so we took a little longer of a choice of course, but it got mixed up with the next one also. So I think we're doing more or less okay. So let me just go through the remaining things. Uh, Bharti was very upset with me for not mentioning many of the important things that is there in my presentation. So I'm going to go through this. Uh, okay, so I have to do some 10 more slides after which you'll... All right, so deciding on a course, I've already spoken about it. A couple of pointers. These are like, you know, cheat sheet pointers. These are also quite important. Several courses will be reruns. So what is the meaning of rerun? All the I, material that was done in the previous time is also available. Material including assignments, solutions, video lectures, etc. Okay, so quite often this is of uh, great use when you do the course again, you know, if it was run once before, you know what assignments were given, you can practice that ahead of time, you'll know what kind of questions would come in the exam, all those things are very useful. So you might want to exploit that as well. In particular, the videos for those course will already be available for you, which you can download and put it in your LAN. Okay, so this kind of thing is very useful. So please look out for these rerun courses. If these courses are rerun, make sure you access the previous time's content and use, use it for your own benefit. Okay, so student enrollment, this is another thing I'll emphasize once again, even though a bunch of students are doing it through your local chapter, each person has to individually enroll in the course and individually submit assignments. Okay, so this is very, very important. You can ask them to watch the videos together if you like, but they have to individually respond to assignments because otherwise we will not have their marks and they will not be able to write the exam. It will be a big problem. So make sure that they, each of them does it correctly. And make sure that they pick the local chapter option when they enroll. That's also very important. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the forum, for instance, we have seen continuously that local chapter colleges, some of the students are not using the forum a lot. Okay. So now I think maybe this is for various reasons. In fact, uh, some of the faculty, some of the uh, mentors from the last time we had a meeting like this, they mentioned that our students are not going to use the forum. That's what they said plainly. They said forum is not uh, really very actively used. Uh, I don't know why, but I think... I think maybe, you know, if they want, they're hesitating to write the questions directly, maybe you could help them, you know, paraphrase that question and type it out for them, etc. But asking questions in the forum is very, very important. It gives valuable feedback to the instructor. I think all the faculty here will also agree with me. Forum participation by your students is very important. Please encourage them to do that, okay? Now, another skill that develops in your student, if you ask them to type the questions themselves is, 
they have a question now they have to think about communicating that question through written words in english on a forum now this is an incredible skill for students to learn for everybody to learn okay so it's very hard to do that it's not very easy you have to write it very clearly so that somebody else can read understand and respond okay so it's a good skill to develop for your students as well so please encourage them to participate in the forum by asking questions directly on there okay also even responding to questions that's also very nice okay so during the course run as an spoc you have to work with the mentors you have to monitor the progress of the students just make sure that they are doing okay so there was, there was emphasis on how dropouts happen uh for various reasons it might be a bit natural that dropouts happen in online courses but do make an effort to minimize that as much as possible try to motivate students keep them motivated throughout here again your choice of courses will help okay choosing the courses for which you can ensure that students uh, stay motivated throughout will help a lot so please do uh, uh make that uh, do that i think hall ticket yeah so these are more administrative so maybe bar barthi will come back to it uh so exam related okay so here is again an issue so quite often when your students write exams uh this is done like i said through uh, tcsi on in various centers we want to hear back from you about what happened in the exam what did something go wrong did you have a good experience or not now this is very 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 important i cannot emphasize this enough so for instance if you find that a very good student in your class in your school in your college is not getting good marks in an exam please let us know you know i mean these are things it could be an exam related issue if there were particularly exam related issues if you had good students not getting marks uh, that that you think they should have got please let us know because these are all things that we can help out you know this is feedback that's important to us we can go back to our exam partner and tell them about these issues and get things resolved okay so please please keep the communication channels open even during the exam when the exam runs are there issues with the center is did something not go well in the center uh, please please let us know don't uh, don't think that that's out of out outside of your uh, involvement okay so was it easy to go to the center was it easy to write the exam was there air conditioning or uh, were, were you sitting in 50 degrees writing the exam please please write that it's hard for us to be everywhere so if you if you serve us uh, with that fashion it will be very helpful okay so now i come to the notion of mentors now this is also very important and the last time i think we frankly didn't do the mentors part very well we didn't pay enough attention to that part and uh, some, some of the things slipped uh, nevertheless i want to talk about a few of these things now who is a mentor a mentor is some faculty member in your college who can help students uh, go through that course now this is not just monitoring students or asking them to write the i mean there are two parts to it now one part is you monitor how many people are submitting assignments and ask them to submit assignments make sure that they watch the video and encourage them to come to the lab give them some lab space etc that is one part of it the other part is to help them actively in the content of the course okay help them understand the content of the course help them do the assignments in the course now both of these are very critical you know you should do both and we think of a mentor as someone who does both okay so someone who facilitates the online participation of students to do doing various things and also helps them understand the content etc okay so now uh, we, we have some restrictions we don't want one faculty member to be mentoring too many students uh, we want we want that number to be uh, lesser now a mentor has to enroll in the course that is a very important thing so every faculty member who wants to mentor students in your college they also have to themselves enroll in the course as a student and then they are added as a mentor and your students have to pick them as mentors okay these are important steps i think we try sending instructions about this but this is important and like i said basic tasks are uh, quite okay uh okay so we will check if the mentor is enrolled and we will add that is something that you would do okay so i think this is fine i think i would probably want to stop i just want to mention recognition of mentors uh we are going to be a little bit more diligent in looking at what the mentor is doing okay so we want to see for instance uh, how many students were being mentored and also the performance of those students okay so if if a student was mentored by someone we want to see how well that student did in the exam okay so we want to use that as a criteria for recognizing mentors uh, this is an important step that we will be introducing from this uh, semester onwards okay so i think i want to stop here maybe uh, what i'll do now is for uh, i'm going to ask bharti to maybe come on and talk a little bit more about some of these administrative aspects of spocs and mentors and what you have to pay attention to etc okay so i think i'll i'll stop here for now and ask bharti to take over thanks a lot once again for coming over
Okay, finally I get some claps as well. <laughs> Thanks a lot and I'll be around uh, till the end of this workshop. I'm happy to chat with you in case you need uh, any help. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, just as important are the courses, the content, and so on, I think I'll be more speaking from the administrative point of view because we need also the run to be smooth and all other aspects related to the courses we want to kind of smoothen out. So uh, we kind of put in together some points that we have again found from our experience of the last one year when we've had huge numbers come in from local chapters. Many of you may be familiar, many of you, it may seem new. People who are just coming in as local chapters may not make sense, but it's okay, I guess. I will go through some points and uh, get back to us on any of these points in our later interactions saying where you all had difficulties that we would definitely want to know. Uh, yeah, so SPOC, as uh, Professor Andrew said already, if you're a new SPOC, you've just become a local chapter, please ensure that your details on the page are accurate. Many of our local chapter pages still don't have a college logo. Uh, SPOC photos are not there. So kindly update it. Be nice to have all the pages, you know, having all this information there. Uh, see if you start receiving emails from the NOC, SPOC, a Google group. Uh, that should be something that we add in uh, your email ID to the group and you'll start receiving emails. One suggestion here, we've had SPOCs who give their institute ID or somewhere where they receive really important mails and ours is a flood, okay? I think we see almost like 50 mails a day and many of them are related to different issues, may not, uh, you know, be directly uh, involving you. So in that sense, you'll lose track of what important announcements we give and it kind of puts you off from the other mails too. We'd suggest maybe create an email ID specifically for you all to be an SPOC, some uh, college name hyphen SPOC at gmail.com or something and share it to us so that even if you move on as SPOC you just give that email ID to the next person coming in and the continuity remains rather than saying remove this ID put in this ID and so on so don't kind of mix up your existing email IDs with this just give us a separate email ID might work best for people who are uh, getting in as SPOCs Yeah, we've been getting many requests from here as I was talking around saying that can you do uh, workshops for our students internally in our college. Uh, if you all have seen our schedule for the last three weeks, I think in uh, three weeks we are doing about nine workshops and every workshop is a day or two for all of us. Invariably the coordinators come with us from the office, we do all this organization. So currently it is kind of a little hard for us to go to colleges and do workshops internally for your students. One thing we could help you with is we'll share all the presentations with you. They are already available on the NPTEL website, you can take it from us and we would encourage the SPOCs or anybody who knows our processes to actually, you know, organize your students into meetings and talk to them about the same. We are putting a team together who might probably be able to help you in the future with doing such programs for the students, but currently it's not in place. Once it is in place, we will definitely let you know. We would also like to come and interact with the students directly. But currently such requests, I don't think we'll be able to accommodate. We'd be more than happy to accommodate if you want to organize a workshop in your area that we have not done, say, for the past two years. If you can get about 30, 40 colleges in your area that we could come and address, okay? Uh, we have sent you some posters and uh, brochures regarding the new courses. We have many, many more available on the desk outside or with any of our office staff. We'd encourage you to put it up in places in your colleges where students frequent these places, maybe the canteens or the hostels or something, so that they can at least look at it that there's something called NPTEL happening, there's something called an online course happening, and these titles are being offered. Okay, students' enrollment has been emphasized. Kindly see to it that every student is enrolled to the course. If they're not enrolled to the course, they will not be allowed to write the exam because the basic check we do when we open our exam registration form is, is the uh, email ID of the student in that particular course, then only we allow him to even write the exam. So if he's, you know, enrolled to maybe two other courses and now wants to do the exam for a third course, but he's not enrolled there, he will not be right to allow the exam for the third course. So that is something you have to keep in mind when you want the students to take up our exam. Yeah, this is something that we have been seeing the last uh, two times that we have run exams. Uh, there is a way in which we collect uh, money from colleges uh, for the exam registration fee in bulk. That is, you all pay uh, to us through a single DD or an F transfer or something and give us a list of students who are going to write the exams. But we ask you in that only for the basic details of the students and then we send you all recurrent mails and the students reminding them to come to our form and fill out all the other details. 
For instance, what we get from the SPOC when we ask them for a payment is just the name of the student, uh, which course he wants to write the exam for, exam date, center, and whether he's eligible for a scholarship. We don't get the other details such as maybe the address that he wants to give, maybe some contact number, mainly his photograph and signature. That is something we absolutely, absolutely require for generating our hall tickets. We have had many issues because students are not coming to our form before the last date when we need to share data with our exam partner and get our hall tickets out. You might think it's a very trivial issue, but for us, at say 80 centers across India, when they are checking the ID, there's a guy who goes there with just a name, there's no photo there. Then how do you verify it against a photo ID, right? It doesn't make sense for us. We've had cases in the past where two students are carrying a hall ticket which carries the same details of name, college, roll number, everything. It's like one student has the same hall ticket of the other. Somehow this has been missed and only on that day they call us up and they ask us. So the minute we send you all hall tickets, we are uploading the zip folder of hall tickets as soon as we receive it from our exam partner inside your SPOC logins. Students also can go separately and get all the hall tickets, but it's also there. Kindly check that all these details are there. This time on, we are going to start tightening up processes. So far, we have kind of let anybody can write, come without a hall ticket, it's okay. Come without an ID, it's okay. Photos not there on the hall ticket, it's okay. We've been pretty lenient in, you know, just facilitating students from all the local chapters write exams so that that day they don't come and they don't get disappointed. But I think we'll have to start uh, tightening our security processes also because we want to ensure that these people who come and come with the correct papers and they write it. So this time on, if you're sending us de uh, data and you're doing bulk payments, kindly ensure that your students give us all the information much ahead of time and we have all these details. For instance, we've generated certificates for the March and April exams and I think about 200 students still have not given us photographs and we've actually generated certificates without their photographs for them and sent it out to them. Uh, we have sent about 8 to 10 reminders, we do keep reminding SPOCs, we do keep reminding students, but that's all we, that can be done. So kindly ensure that this happens, you know, uh, the correct data supplied to us on time. That is something we'd like to emphasize. Yes, the reporting of issues is very important to us. Kindly let us know the very next day after the exam. So September 18th and 25th, if we have exams running, in that particular week, please write to NPTEL office about any issues that you have faced in the exam, any uh, discrepancies that were there, either related to the question paper, either related to the conduct of the exam, the center, whatever. We want that feedback from you. We do try to send our representatives to these centers, but in the center, when we go, there are 300 students writing, it's spread over five labs. So we get a kind of broad overview of what happens there, but not an in-depth of feedback of, you know, what each person has faced. So kindly let us know about that. We can actually work better on our processes also internally for the next time if you give us this feedback. Yeah, one thing we'd like to mention here is uh, for the mentoring, this time we are kind of putting a cap that one faculty mem mem uh, member can be a mentor for only two courses. So when the SPOC is uploading the list of mentors, which is now currently open, please ensure that you give us only one name for two courses, not more than two courses. And the number we are recommending is about one mentor for every 50 students who is there from your college. Okay, we have put in some guidelines. We have shared it with you in the printouts that we've given it to you in the folders. Also regarding mentors, we didn't have these in place last time. They were more like suggestions, but these are more some things that we would seriously be looking into this time when we are giving out certificates for mentors. So we suggest and recommend that mentors also be following the course and they submit assignments. They give us weekly feedback on our portal on you know what were the contents of the course that particular week. That is invaluable to us because that will go directly to the course instructor who is giving the content. You know, you all are faculty who are probably teaching the same course and the content makes sense to you. So when you all give us feedback about what is there, we can directly share it with the faculty members. So that's a critical component that we would love to have from you and hear from you every week and uh, encourage students to complete the course register and make use of the BC sessions. This is where information that once the local chapter colleges register with us and tell us that we have so many students with us, you know, coming as groups to your exams, what we try to do is we try to get the faculty on board and have direct VC sessions with you. So we have done it in the past for the March and April courses. We had, I think, about 10, 12 sessions. And this we did across Kanpur and Kharagpur also. The faculty from those institutes also did this. So this we would like to definitely encourage and have more of these on board. So if you know even today that so many of maybe 100 from, uh, students from my college are actually getting into this course and we plan uh, for them to take the exam, tell us during the run of the course also we could try to have some VC sessions so that we don't 
wait for the end but we could do it even during that and when we organize such things we'd encourage that you actually be there do the testing which is available ahead see that the connectivity and everything is okay so that you can get the maximum benefit from this kind of session that will be a direct interaction between the students and the faculty that is something like a missing component in the online courses because everything else is offline there so this is something that we'd like to try and encourage um, okay, currently what is open on the portal if you all are SPOCs and are looking at students entering your courses for the July run, we have opened request for an center in your city. Okay, request for an exam center in your city is open as a tab today in your SPOC login on the portal. So if your uh, city, if your students are going to write exams this time in September, October and it's not one of our listed cities, kindly request for a city and give us some numbers so that we know what is the arrangement we need to make with our exam partner here. We are uh, kind of saying a 10% allowance this side, that side, but not more than that. For instance, don't say 500 students will write and finally end up with 50 because they will make the arrangements for 500 students and then we get a 50, it's very hard for us to deal with that. Okay, so kind of just get an idea of how many students you want to write from your college, request us for that. Again, one thing we'd like to emphasize here, many colleges are TCS ION exam credited centers. Uh, one thing as a policy or something that we'd like to try is not give your own students your own college as a center just to maintain the integrity of the exam. If there's no other choice and other colleges are too far of, or for some other reasons they are not av uh, able to find out other centers, we may do it. In that case we will send our representatives to tighten our processes, yes. But as a generic policy we will try to avoid when you all request for centers, we will try for a college in your city close as close as possible to your college but probably not your own. We have two people here, uh, Mr. Rajesh Kumar and Mr. Uh, Mr. Rajesh and Mr. Ram Kumar here from TCS. We get many requests from colleges saying, how do we become an uh, exam center? What should I do for that and all? You can directly interact with them on that. You can also ask them about, yeah, will we get these dates? What are the colleges in my city? What are the questions you have regarding any of these exam centers? You can ask them. Yeah, we'll get them here. Please. So this is uh, Mr. Ram Kumar. He is the manager who works on our project, who is kind of singly responsible, wholly, solely responsible for conduct of exams, giving of our uh, centers, results, and all that. And Mr. Rajesh is our uh, local manager who works with us also in this. So you can interact with both of them and clarify any questions that you have with regard to any TCS-related issues here. Okay. So you want to say something? has spoken about us. You know, we represent TCS and I take care of delivery of examinations. This gentleman is the project manager for NPTES, especially for this assessment. So uh, hopefully your students or you know, people from your call, uh, people who represent from your uh, respective uh, colleges or institutions would have had a pleasant experience. Maybe you can share your experience. This is a place where we can also hear from you that, you know, how did your uh, students give feedback about a particular exam or so. And anything beyond that, if you want to know that if you want to be a partner of an examination center or, uh, or anything else you know, related to the examination process and things like that, uh, you are welcome to uh, ask and we are, he, he will you know, give you the uh, relevant answers to that. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll get on with this. Uh, no questions, I assume. Uh, no, the time. questions will come later on, I guess. Oh. We're not giving you time now. So I have a lot more to say. So time is later. Uh, OK. Okay, best practices we have put in some. We'll share this PPT with you in the forum, so probably you can go to it. But anyway, the next uh, slot that we have is sharing of your own best practices within your college if you have implemented something. So probably we'll skip this and go in for later. Uh, infrastructure. Recognition of SPOCs, yes, for the last run we have done something wherein I think the certificates for the SPOCs and the mentors have gone out. So this is something that we definitely can do every time. Regarding any other thing that we can support to recognize SPOCs and mentors, that depends on the future on various factors. We will keep you informed of the same later on. Um, Okay, this was an interesting comparison we had put out in our uh, NOC, SPOC forum also. I don't know how many of you had the time to go through it. This was actually given by one of the SPOCs of uh, Geetham University. So he had sent us saying that, you know, uh, this is something that he thought could work for faculty who want to do short-term courses and so on as to why they could adapt or adopt 
NPTEL as a short term course that they have to do, two per year or something he was giving us. So there was something that we shared here that you can do it from your college, you can put in the time, the course is spread over two or three months rather than, you know, concentrated within a week and you have an exam and so on. So there's something that we thought we'd project to faculty members of colleges of how they can use it as a short term course. Uh, this has already been done, I guess. Uh, yeah, this is a major, major request we have for all the SPOCs here, and we are going to try and work on this because we hear from many sources, form and, uh, not formal actually, informally through word of mouth or when we just uh, meet random people, we do hear that our certificates are being used. For instance, we get these requests uh, from companies saying, can you verify if the student has uh, done your course? And then we see that he's applied for mentorship in a company and cited our course saying that he's done it and he has a certificate in that. Then there's somebody else who writes that I got a job change or something can you verify that and he's shown some certificates but in a formal basis we haven't had anything which we can put up on our website and say at least some success stories of having run so many courses you know how have people benefited so that is something we uh, definitely want from the SPOCs of colleges if you'll have any stories to share that these certificates helped your students in placements or internships or how it helped the faculty members whether you all benefited directly indirectly from doing our certification courses if you or if you're even doing credit transfer for instance the three colleges we told you incidentally we came to know about it but probably many more of you are doing it or giving it on your transcript or something like that we definitely want to know at least that for data points you know when we want to tell people saying how these are being used it would be an invaluable feedback so if you can either tell it to us today or send us an email or send us a letter from your head or on some letterhead we could put it up on a portal and say you know these are ways in which colleges are using our uh, online courses okay this is very specific uh, admin uh, stuff that I want to say for the current run I'll run through it a little quickly. I know we've been talking for quite too long without letting any of you talk and you all have been just listening, but we're sorry for that. We'll, next will be your slot where we will sit and listen. So scholarship, yes, uh, this time we have very limited number of scholarships because uh, we still haven't heard a confirmation from our company partner who has been uh, giving us money for the scholarships. So we have a limited amount. We haven't come up on a criteria of how we are going to distribute the scholarship because we do not know the numbers that we are going to receive. For instance, last time for the March run, we actually got requests for 18,000 scholarships and about 5,000 we couldn't match the email ID so the only criterion we had then was we were checking the portal to see the students were at least in the course and uh, about 5,000 were not there there was some typo or mismatch in the email IDs 13,000 of them we actually approved scholarships so we had that kind of money then we are not too sure about the numbers which will come in now because the number of local chapters have gone up and if more people are going to request us we wouldn't know so some criteria will come up with based on that and we let you know on the group as and when we kind of do it. One thing to the SPOCs when you'll upload the list for scholarship, uh, please give the correct email ID of the student, faculty member, whoever is from your college who you want to avail the scholarship as enrolled in the portal. Because the check we do is we take out the list of enrollees for every course from the portal and that will have the email ID. You all miss out a dot, you all miss out a dash, you all miss out an A, B, C, whatever. or uh, it's totally different. He enrolls there using a Gmail, gives you an institute ID. We are not going to match it up. We just have an automated process. We compare this sheet with the other. We say yes, no, yes, no. So some SPOCs have come and asked us, why did you give some people? I applied for 300. You gave for 250. 50 of them didn't get. What was the criteria? No criteria we did last time except for check for email ID. So if the email IDs had some problem, it wouldn't have matched and we wouldn't have approved it. So when you all upload the list, kindly check that whatever email IDs you all are giving have no typos and they are exactly the email ID students have used to enroll to the courses for which you all are requesting for scholarships so this is something that you need to keep in mind uh, exam fee payment okay this is something uh, we are really happy about and we want to share it with you so uh, one thing is you all saw the numbers there right about 8,000 people from the last run the colleges had come up with paying through a DD payment or a bulk payment the idea between before uh, you know idea of introducing this bulk payment was we didn't have this till uh, maybe last year come May or July uh, exam time I think so what happened that time was there were colleges which said we don't have bank accounts for students and they can't pay online so then we said okay do this bulk payment option but some of uh, the last students we found out that the SPOC and the college team kind of gets caught up in this whole process of getting students together collecting money from them giving it to us giving details and all that and the focus moves from actually ensuring that the student is learning from the course doing the assignments and actually being there to this administrative tasks 
So then we again were thinking this is not what we want. I mean, we wanted to facilitate bulk payment for people who definitely do not have bank accounts and you want to do it for them, for those students, helping out those students. But say if Chennai colleges we are looking at, I guess most of somebody, their parents, uncles, friends, somebody should be having a bank account with a credit card, debit card. So we would rather discourage them to go in for bulk payment and ask them to go to the form, pay online on their own. Now that on the portal we have this local chapter tracking, right? We can tell you who is the student from your college who has paid it. So that should be possible. So one thing this time we would actually want to stress specifically is uh, and uh, another thing we would want to say is we are not going to recognize any college based on the bulk payment amounts that we are getting or the number of students. It is only the total number of students as Professor Andrew was saying it is the performance of the students that we are recognizing. So whether you all give uh, 300 students all of them paying on their own or you give a DD or they do something else it doesn't matter to us. So that is not going to be a factor when we are going to recognize you on the portal. Okay, and this time what we have implemented is we are doing a cash collect. We have done that in form is integrated with the bank account. So what students can do it even if he doesn't have a bank account, he comes to our form, fills the form, he goes to the payment gateway there it will say do you want to avail a cash option. If he says yes, it will generate a chalan and in the chalan he can take it to the bank, pay in cash there and actually do it, we will reconcile the amount. So now there is even no requirement for the student to have a bank account. He can pay through cash using the chalan facility that we have introduced. So we recommend that the SPOC actually with his team work more on students learning and benefiting from the course. Yes, please do it if you have an easy proce process in place. Maybe you have an NPTEL counter somewhere. Students just come and pay. That's easy for you. Yes, go ahead and do it. We are welcome and very happy to get DDs and checks from you in bulk. We are also happy saying, oh, 6 lakhs today, one check came, 3 lakhs a check came. Yes, we are really happy when we see that. That's so many students have come in. But if it's really tiresome for you and you're saying, my God, it's such a pain to be an SPOC of an NPTEL local chapter because of these tasks, this is something that you could use today. Use the cash uh, pay-in facility. Use the, uh, uh, ask the students who have bank accounts, encourage them to do the payment on their own. The other advantage here we see is when they come to a form, by force, they will fill up all the details of the form and then only go to the payment. We will get his photo, we will get his signature, we will get all his details. And we don't have to be behind them to get the other details that we normally don't get when they do a bulk payment okay so this is something that is there we will also put it out in the form uh, yes the SPOC uh, mentors the mentors tab is open in your SPOC login so please start filling out your mentor tabs there tell us who are the mentors for the courses in your college request for the exam city the next steps which will start coming in the next three four weeks when the course starts is you will upload the request for scholarship we will process it it will take some time we'll process give it back to you if you're doing a bulk payment upload the list for that and uh, other two tabs that are there inside your SPOC login are request for a course. If any of your colleges want to request for courses that you want seen run on NPTEL as an online course, please put in your request there even with maybe some syllabus or anything that you want applicable to. And uh, a feedback is also there. If you could give us periodic feedback, uh, that will also be great. We'll take that into account as and when we use it. Uh, information given by NPTEL office inside the SPOC login. This is for people who have not seen it, uh, we've done it pr prior to or for the new chapters that are coming in. One is as soon as the hall tickets come in, we put a zip folder of the hall tickets of all the candidates writing from your college inside your login. So if somebody is not able to download, not able to print, you will have the complete list of the hall tickets of all the students who are writing the exam from your college. The second one what we do, once the, mark mark, uh, the results are announced, we give the mark sheet of the students, each student who has written the exam from your college, the zip is again put inside your SPOC login. We will share the raw scores of the assignments and the exam score that the student has gotten. So that will be something that will be available to you in your SPOC login. The third one is the e-certificates. Once we generate the e-certificates for your students, the soft copies, we zip that up, put it inside your SPOC login, again for your use, if you want to put it up somewhere or give it to the students. Then the soft copies of mentor and SPOC certificates. So all these, so you can see how many tasks we are actually putting inside the SPOC and SPOC uh, login. There are many things in which you'll interact with us through email, through your login, phone, it definitely come in person, that's all there. But there are multiple things wherein we'll keep on working working with you constantly through the run of the course, even after the course is over. It keeps on going. The interactions between you and us kind of never stop. So you can see that what happens here. Uh, 
Uh, there is a new feature on the local chapter website. Again, this is in response to many SPOC saying that, you know, I get 100 emails a day, I lose out the important announcements. We have created a tab called Announcements Forum on our local chapter website. People have not been there, kindly just check that out. Uh, currently, we don't have any posts there, but all important posts that we want to push out to the SPOCs will be available here. So if you think you don't want to check your email and you're missing out posts, come here. All our important datelines, what we want you uh, done, our timelines, everything will come out here. The other thing that we have done is that NOC SPOC Google group we have embedded as a forum inside your SPOC login. So this is a public thing visible to anybody. It's uh, public on the web. So this is just announcements from our side. But the actual discussion that we do on the email, right, that we have embedded as a forum, but that is available only when you log into the website inside your SPOC login. So these are two recent changes that we have done. Uh, I think I'm done with the uh, PPT. Okay, uh, just wanted to say that uh, some of them are asking about hard disks that you possibly sent us for copying. We have a person called Nagarajan here. Nagarajan, are you here anywhere? Yeah, Nagarajan there. You can uh, contact any of our team, but specifically he's the one who handles your hard disk copying. If you want any status updates about your hard disk, he'll be the person that you can uh, ask and check out about the hard disk. And... Uh, uh, morning I did this announcement, I'll repeat it because many were not present at that time. If any of the colleges have to collect certificates from us for the May, ex uh, April exams, the bulk certificates are with us in our office. Kindly come there and please collect it from us. After the lunch, we'll be giving you the same. So our team will be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yes, it is. 1.30 is any lunch for us. Mics? You want to be here for yes, it is an open forum that we are open. Okay, so I thought maybe we are a little bit more organized about the feedback, but it looks like it's just open. So, uh, so when do you want to do the staff introduction? Until in the end. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is. Yes. Okay. So maybe the NPTEL staff who are standing all over the place could come to this side. So after the feedback session, we'll have we'll introduce some of our staff to you just so that you can see some people who you interact with. Okay, so now uh, what, what we'd like to do is to throw the floor open to local chapters here. So many of you have been with us for a long time. You've been quite active. You've produced toppers. So you know who the colleges are. So maybe, <coughs> maybe I'll start with uh, uh, the toppers list that we had. NEC Coil Petty, I think, was uh, one of those people. If somebody from there can come in and share a few experiences as to what you do. I think what is important is to tell people about what your practices are, what, what do you do as an SPOC, uh, et cetera. Introduce yourself briefly and, and talk. Yes. Working. Hello. Hello. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, myself, uh, Camillus uh, from National Engineering College. Uh, last run, we have a nice experience uh, with our students. Uh, mostly, we have uh, more than 1,000 students have been registered for the courses, and uh, at most uh, 600 have returned for our March run, and uh, 200 plus has been returned for April. And yet to, uh, we have to receive the results related with the April run. But uh, for March run, uh, 40 toppers, that is more than 90 marks, we have been secured there. And uh, two, two are our own faculty members uh, done introduction to research. And uh, most of the students have done in, uh, English, uh, technical English, uh, and uh, they have secured more than 90. And uh, uh, related with the feedbacks from the students, uh, they go, uh, have a uh, given with a good feedback uh, related with the courses, uh, what it has been offered uh, in the NPTEL. And, uh, and we form one uh, Google form uh, related with uh, the collection of uh, information related from uh, students and uh, that Google form will, has been useful. Uh, that uh, what are the details uh, that we have been asking with the NPTEL and NPTEL has been asking with us and that information has been updated in the Google form and so that uh, whatever the details uh, 
they have been asking we have been able to give and uh, what are the details uh, they have been asking we can able to get it from the students now also we framed the google form for the registration process and so automatically whatever the information they have been updating is been updated in our google uh, form and uh, back end we have been collecting and uh, the same information has been updated with us because the last two experience uh, we have uh, faced the problem with the uh, email id and so uh, most of the students have been lost their scholarship uh, because of that and so we framed this uh, topic uh, getting their updation with the google form so that uh, there will be error free statement in their names and their uh, email id so uh, this process has been going on uh, and we started this process by last uh, registration that is exam time registration so whatever the students they have been registering and uh, that has been registered accorded uh, registered with us too so what are the students who have been registered and not registered this information we have been getting at the back end so uh, this is uh, the way we have been tracking with the students and uh, yet another we have a, a lot of uh, feedbacks from our side uh, the certificates related with uh, less than 35 uh, this time the marks was been printed <laughs> and so uh, the certificate will not be useful for the such students so uh, supposed to be if it is uh, successfully completed and the marks is not been displayed they can use it for any other purposes uh, so that uh, that is one side feedback from our students okay. rest uh, we are have some of our administrative uh, difficulties and uh, that we can discuss okay all right so i think the new policy is to not to give any certificate for people who are less than 40 so this is a change you might you might want to tell your students that for above 40 you give a certificate and marks will be printed I think that is the decision our committee took. It's uh, it's not in uh, it's not in my hands. You know, the, there's a committee which runs these certification exams, and they they make these decisions. Yes, let's hear from Dronacharya. Maybe I think they have come from far. So, Dronacharya College of Engineering is again the next college which produces a lot of toppers. Very good afternoon to all of you. I am Prachi Agarwal, and uh, we basically have two colleges, sir. One in Gurgaon, one in Greater Noida. So I represent the Greater Noida campus. I have my colleagues from Gurgaon as well. Ashu ma'am and uh, I don't know your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think the success remains the same as Andrew sir very aptly said that uh, getting to the crux of the course and then probably uh, getting the faculty understand the, f uh, the, the contents of the course and then probably uh, diluting the students towards the same so that they understand what exactly is inside you know that that course material rest i am sure little secrets could be shared by my colleagues in gurgaon so probably i'm not sure if they want to share something of how the success stories go there thank you a very good afternoon to all of you firstly i want to say thank to thanks to naptal team due to which students learn a lot of good things secondly uh, last time, 500 students from our colleges registered the mic various. Is, not, uh, is it working? Okay. Last time, uh, 500 students from our college registered in various co uh, various courses, and out of which 40 students are in our in topper list, and okay. more than 100 students got the uh, above 80 percent scores. Mainly problem which students face from the last time is that assignment pattern is different than the question patterns. Last, at the last moment, student got the mail that uh, assign, your question paper is offline and that is very difficult to them. At the, uh, as students prepared according to the assignment during the course, but at the last time, student got the question papers offline. That is very difficult for them. So if it is possible that uh, if is it possible if it is possible for you please mention in from the starting of the course the types of the question paper pattern of the question okay. paper sure. thank Thanks. you so, i think the faculty here also heard it <laughs> we've been asking faculty for question paper type and uh, i know madhavan had something very interesting to tell about that <laughs> so it's very hard for our faculty to mention what kind of exam they want in the beginning we will try to make that better but i think the other thing is we are telling our faculty is to have a significant fraction of questions from assignments used in the exam also. So, so that, it's so very important. What's very important is for your students to do the assignments well. Okay, 100% important. If they do that, then the questions in the exam are going to be similar to the assignments. So it's not just for the 25% marks. For most of the 75% also, you have to do the assignment. Very, very important. 
Okay, so you heard from two uh, people who have been very actively working. Uh, so one thing, I think, so on a weekly basis, do you have a separate time when they watch the videos or do they just, do you just let them do it on their own? Do you organize it for them or you don't, do you, do you do anything like that? Okay, you organize some extra lectures or something. In NEC, do you have? Okay. Okay. So they will be collecting the information uh, from one system. So you will download all the lectures and put yeah. it in one server. Uh, one server and uh. they will be collecting the information and uh, they will be accessing uh, from wherever they are. Okay. So they can come to that machine physically and then download those lectures if they want. Okay. So something like that uh, they have done. Okay. So uh, the Kumaraguru College of Engineering. Kumaraguru. Is there anyone from Kumaraguru? Yeah. Okay. So is there. I am Rafiq, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechatronics Engineering, Murugur College of Technology. As you already told, uh, first I did the uh, course, sir. First I did the course, uh, uh, Manufacturing Systems Technology. I got 88 marks, uh, 88 percentage as the topper in that uh, course. After getting the topper, uh, it, it is published in, in the department, department notice boards. Okay. Uh, then these people are got the information that there is a NPTEL online certification course is there. Uh, I I started my principal to introduce these courses in, in my college. After that, uh, uh, it is published that uh, only two toppers, uh, but, uh, but it is uh, 10 toppers in my college. 10 toppers in your college? Yes, oh, sir. very good. Okay. Uh, we, started, we started the NPTEL uh, local chapter in the month of February only, uh, but uh, we got active IT college uh, participation uh, recently. At the, at the same time, we are publishing the toppers list in the notice boards as well as we are uh, creating the mentors uh, whatsapp group as well uh, okay. in, this, in this course and we are going to create the uh, whatsapp mentors group as well uh, at the same time we are going to uh, create uh, more number of uh, more number of toppers in this uh, course and we are looking for that uh, this in this time we, we are, my aim is to produce 25 toppers 25 toppers okay yes. <laughs> great thank you Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, NPTEL team uh, for your con you. consistent uh, support as well as uh, guidance. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the other thing that uh, Bharti is pointing out is in case you, any of your colleges are using it for credit internally. Okay. Please. That's also a thing that you can share now. Okay. So I think another college I would like to hear is from Kamaraj College. Okay. Yeah. Sure. In my college, uh, the faculty members has to go anyone MOOC course, uh, certification course. Uh, uh, we already know. <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> you have to do it. Huh? Yeah, yeah okay. we have to do it. Okay. At the same time, uh, we, are, we already know that there are uh, MOOC course uh, certification processes there in uh, Coursera, edX, uh, uh, are also there. But uh, in that courses, we have to spend uh, 29, 29 US dollars. That is uh, around uh, 1,900 rupees we have to spend as, as the same time it is a introduction course means uh, 1900 we have to spend uh, it is a advanced uh, nor uh, intermediate level means we have to spend 49 us dollars but uh, in the input it is uh, oh, it is easy to get the certificates at, uh, at the same time we are getting from the iits means it is uh, more valuable for us uh, at the same time the faculty members has to get sir so not only the certification uh, the, if we, we get, get the toppers, means uh, it is a national level recognition we are getting. Uh, for the faculty members, uh, uh, <laughs> I want to say something. If we, uh, my evaluation process is so strict. Uh, if if uh, the people from the, uh, the students can't get easily, easily marks. So the people, uh, the students will tell uh, he is not uh, teaching well like that. <laughs> he, he don't know the concepts as well. Like, like that they will they will tell uh, but the thing is that uh, if we show the certificate i have the uh, concepts already i have the concepts good uh, like that means uh, no no one will question us this is also a good thing to do okay good so you're saying really i mean students rec students also recognize faculty who have these certificates so oh, that's great yeah maybe kamaraj call yeah, I think you can focus on if you're giving credit for these colleges. Many of you may be affiliated to Anna University or something. Maybe they can do. I'm sorry. 
yeah if it helps in your placements or anything like that is also good to hear because people have these questions in their minds as well yeah sure good afternoon everybody i am dr k muthulakshmi associate professor triple department kamraj college of engineering technology virudhunagar i took in charge as spoc uh, this semester only before that dr s naglakshmi was there so in in this semester more than uh, 300 400 students enrolled and we got scholarship for uh, 290 students and 130 students have registered uh, seven students got, I think uh, the number shown is five, I think it's number seven, including seven. the April uh, 2016 toppers, okay. uh, especially the subject the electromagnetic theory and uh, finite element, element analysis in the mechanical department and technical English for uh, engineers. Okay. Even the first year students, even the first year students uh, enrolled for uh, technical English and got uh, rank. And uh, one thing I have to mention that uh, in our college, more, more than, uh, sorry, out of seven, five faculty members got uh, Top. elite plus gold. Okay. Five faculty members got elite plus gold. And uh, they sit with the students. The faculty members sit with the students and they solve the assignments. And our management and our principals are encouraged, uh, my, that is my SPOC, to uh, uh, enroll more students. Okay. And participation is uh, uh, important. That. Uh, Encouragement from the principal sir is more for uh, getting uh, this activity uh, and uh, Are you participating in the forum? Do you ask questions in the forum? No, no, no. We, are, we are not uh, because uh, uh, as Madam Bharati mentioned we have continued we are getting mails more than 50 uh, mails at, uh, every day so <laughs> <laughs> we have to concentrate No, not in the SPOC forum, I mean uh, in the course forum Oh, course, course forum, forum uh, faculty members asked. Are faculty members, okay. I also en uh, enrolled for electromagnetic theory, but uh, I'm not able to solve assignment. Okay. I don't find time <laughs> because I have to collect the details from the department coordinators and I have to upload the details. I don't find uploading the data, any difficulty in uploading the data or uh, nothing else, but I have to collect the data. That, that uh, I have uh, faced dif uh, difficulty, but uh, you have introduced one. You uh, think, mm. you know, the student, roll number, college. Yep. So that will be easy for me yeah. to... Uh, you can also use, use the Google form idea that they are using so that students can enter the information. But directly. students not entering the details. Okay. <laughs> that is the difficulty I have faced. I can uh, And uh, I'm very happy and proud to be a part of NPTEL. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So, yeah, sure. Hello everybody, I am the SPOC from Pondicherry Engineering College, uh, V. Vijay Lakshmi. So first of all, I would like to applaud the NPTEL team for the fabulous work which they have been carrying out. Such a wonderful work because they get about uh, 50 mails every day. And uh, the power with, in which they, I see with them is instant, instantly, within a few seconds, I get back the uh, answer to my query. So that is it. So they have been doing such a wonderful work. I don't know how they are doing the database management for about six plus lakhs of students. Is it? Is it not? And how they are managing the queries from 500 uh, institutes, uh, 500 local chapter. And Pondicherry Engineering College entered into as a local chapter only from this uh, year, January 2016. And we have got about 600 students registered this time out of which 329 students took up their examination and uh, we have got about uh, six rank holders that is elite plus gold and one student narendran he scored about 99 marks in data structures and algorithms that is oh, how you. i think the <laughs> faculty member has to say about it so and uh, ah, about the credit which you were asking of we are an autonomous institution so we have got apart from our regular curriculum the professional development courses for the students uh, uh, mainly being uh, uh, taken up as a very important course because they have to update themselves. So these professional development courses are these courses like the NPTEL certification courses, etc. And uh, we have actually uh, taken up the 20 course as one credit course and the 40 courses, certification courses as the two credit course. Okay. So in that way, we encourage them to take up your courses. Okay, and uh, that is the first point which I wanted to tell you people and uh, I could really like to thank your faculty 
research per person over here. So the, they have taken so much of pains in presenting those videos which our students really enjoy. We also enjoy together and we have uh, lots of discussion in the forum with them. And uh, one more thing is that certain limitations which I wanted to point out, uh, not lim limitation like what I feel is that when we have a direct conversation with you people in the studio, why is it your audio too low? Is it, do you have some attenuation of uh, the signal level? Uh, through the phone I'm talking about. Oh, just calling us on the phone. Huh? Yes, yes. The All the time, uh, the other end, we never receive your voice. Okay. Uh, that is, just find out why is it. The landline, the landline yeah. number. Is okay. And I think one of the uh, uh, colleagues from uh, Gurgaon al already pointed about the question paper that was a problem. Yeah. So if you could make it available after the end of every course. And the other main problem which we faced that, Normally you say 18th uh, July, like you say this is the last date for registration of a particular course. Then after that you give an extension for the registration. I think most of the SPOC could have faced this. But the course start before that. Yeah. So the students who are register, registering late will, be, uh, will have a problem in catching up with the assignments. So if you could solve that for us. Yeah, so that's why we are stopping enrollment this time on July 18th. But you know what will happen? <laughs> you know what will happen? The faculty here, there will be a mail from some student to a faculty member who is teaching the course. Desperate please saying, I really have to do your course. And then the faculty will forward that mail to us. So we, we really have no choice. You know, at that point we say, okay, okay, enrollment extended by one more day or something. So that, so there are fa factors beyond our control. But yeah, that's, a, that's good feedback. We, we've tried to do it this time. Will we stick to July 18th? Yes, apparently we are going to stick to July 18th. If we stick okay. to July 18th, then there's no problem. But one more issue I'll point out. Some of the colleges across the country do not open by uh, July 15th or 20th, apparently. I think in the south we open mostly. I think some places... No, West, Bengal. West Bengal, apparently. Yeah, so in Kerala it's August 1st. So we've been, you know, we're fighting this a lot, but it's very hard. When you go across the country, there's no common timetable that anybody follows. It's impossible to follow, you know. Bengal, for instance, everybody is out for like one month in October, puja, etc. So things like that come in in the middle. So it's very hard to have one calendar. We will try this time to stick to July 18th. Maybe, let's see. And one more thing which I wanted to point out is, we give two separate uh, Excel sheet forms. One Excel sheet is for Excel sheet is during uh, for the registration of the examination. So these two, ah, yeah. these two Excel sheets are different quite in the, uh, the data entry. If you make out one Excel sheet for us, then th for the students who are not registering for the examination, probably we can delete out their names and just forward it. Otherwise it becomes mandatory like uh, uh, preparing two Excel sheets separately becomes very cumbersome for us. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's very comprehensive feedback. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyone else who has maybe used it so extensively? Yes, somebody. In the back. It's hold on. Yeah, just hold on one minute. It's not. I am SPOC from SSM College of Engineering. I have two more suggestions. Some of the PPTs can be uploaded in the local chapter that can be presented in the classroom itself by the class teacher. Uh, that so will be more benefited by the students. Uh, the so PPTs of, the students. I'm sorry, just sorry, I didn't understand the, the presentations that we are making. Yes. Okay. That will be benefited. And how to registration, some more uh, uh, pages can be uploaded in the local chapter that may be very easy to reach the college Did students like that. Here? The, I mean, okay, so the presentation that we make, the Whatever slides that you want. Okay. How to make enrollment. How to, how to, how to do enrollment, uh, how to do uh, these uh, things. Uh, okay, okay. More helpful for the students. Side. Okay, I understand. So that will be easy to reach the students. That also okay. Be more benefited for the students, I am saying. Sure. So, so then more enrollment can be made. So that, that will be more benefited. Then yeah. one more thing, whatever the registration, new, two things you are added newly, the college name should be registered. Okay. There is a entry so oil registration. Ah, oil okay. registration. Uh, you are saying that in the drop box, yes. college name is there. Yes. When college name is included, that will be reflected in the local, local uh, chapter of la login, spoke login. That will be more benefited. Yeah, Number yeah. of students enrolled. Yeah, Suppose so five students or ten students, four maybe. When they are low, uh, enrolled, that will be reflected in the 
SPOC, SPOC, SPOC login. login itself. Okay. So, so thank, that thank we you. can know more how many students without contacting students. That yes. will be very more, more useful. That, that is the easy. plan. We have introduced yes. it now. Yes. We'll we'll add that. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think there was a person from yeah. Good, a good yeah. afternoon. I am uh, SPOC from uh, Koshalank Engineering College. Uh, only we started only from this semester, January 2016. So we thought of it should be purely student centric because we are from South soon, right? So we have to check how our students are. So we, we left out as it is. They have to take in by themselves. Mm. But anyhow, the number of enrollments are good. Uh, uh, even our students uh, registered around 500, hmm. but uh, due to our academic schedule, they I think they didn't do as they are. Hmm. So this is our uh, feedback. Okay. So we uh, we felt like that, and even we secured the six uh, gold medal. That two from only from technical in English. English. Uh, nothing. Uh, no one is received from uh, core side. Really, uh, we are shamed for that. <laughs> so, but we have to work. So, from uh, now, and also we felt that uh, f from SPOC login, now we have a right to check the statistics of our students, even in intermediate, right? Uh, so, here, it, uh, he statistics, uh, their performance statistics, we yeah, can yeah. check, right? Yeah, you can uh, see. Right. Now, uh, we have a forum for that so we can even give a trigger that is essential for our students that we know so we have to aim for higher okay. really we have to appreciate MP NPTEL to share your all the coordinators to share their uh, valuable outcomes to our students really we are happy and uh, I should be very proud to be the part of this okay thank you thank you thank you very much just to clarify, the mentors can see the progress of the students, uh, not directly in SPOC. The mentors who are registered for the course can see it. Uh, mentors, sir, mentors side means whether uh, our students can, uh, because in the previous, uh, previous semester, it's like our students can take any mentor throat. No, no, no. I think uh. we, we have changed that also. Uh, that also. Uh, yeah, that your mentors. Your because students. our students are very uh, brilliant. They, they <laughs> <laughs> So, That's yeah, it. so uh, we'll work on that. We uh, can talk about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, I am Biju Dharma Balan. I am SPOC of Marath Nishas College for Advanced Studies, Thiruvella. Uh, actually, we started the uh, local chapter last year, but unfortunately, uh, apart from myself, our students couldn't register for the exam because it was overlapping with the university exam. Mm -hmm. So, one of the suggestions I have is uh, if we could give uh, two or three uh, exam days or and, and, uh, for the students, it would be useful. Another thing is, if somebody uh, disqualifies who didn't get a minimum marks, there should be a second supplementary exam <laughs> for uh, <laughs> so that uh, the students. Uh, okay. okay. So ju just to reiterate, our exams are on two Sundays, two consecutive Sundays in the afternoon. Okay, that's where our exams are. Uh, it's really hard to do more exams than that. So, so I but problem is. Uh, some of the Sundays we have allotted to Kerala, especially our, I am from biological science. Uh, it is in very remote place. So the center I, I participated. Uh, so uh, centers, yeah, you know, I we went give to the city name, the exact center in the city is chosen by one Yeah, of because the, the center it is, given <laughs> as, yeah, it is given as Cochin. I but know. the college is very far without any, uh, what you call public transport conveyance. There is no what you call uh, restaurants for food, <laughs> taking food, nothing, no facility was there. So it was a terrific ex, uh, center <laughs> because I myself participated in yes. that to understand. So this is the, the feedback that you have to give after the exam, you know, very important and we have to give it back to them and they have to figure out what the centers are. And then the center itself, better. there was a lot of noise from the air conditioning and they <laughs> are not willing to switch off that uh, okay. AC. So I mean, please, please keep this in mind. It's very important for us to hear this feedback about the exam. Okay, another thing is in uh, biological science uh, course, which I, I took, the audio uh, is clear, clear. It was not clear. Okay. The video, the video, video is videos. good, but the audio output was… For the course lectures, is it? Yeah. Okay. Course. So this is another thing which the SPOC login has. I think even the mentor login has. Every mentor can give feedback on every week's content. 
okay so if you log in into that uh, local chapter if you go to nptel.ac.in slash local chapter and you log in as a mentor you can give feedback on lectures every week okay and that feedback we will faithfully g take it into give it to our studio people give it to our faculty it can be any kind of feedback you can say this week's content was very advanced our students could not follow what were the exact difficulties that level of feedback you can give and in fact i, I would i would uh, say very frankly i think that that part is being underutilized by mentors okay as a mentor if you are tracking the course very closely with your students please go and use that forum to give us feedback okay so that will help a lot this kind of thing can be pointed out like in the first week of the course so we'll be happy to take it but please please give us that feedback because it's very hard sometimes to figure out what it is yeah this gentleman there at the back okay. okay this uh, is yeah, sure. mm -hmm. i am pro selvan from sri ramakrishna engineering college coimbatore i am representing in the form of students they have asked that they want one more day for the examination dates three the, three days okay. because this year that is we have started in the year 2016 february mm. in our local chapter mm. in kumara uh, kc in src but unfortunately nearly around 589 students have registered for the examination both days comes fall under the examination dates of uh, our students they are not able to write the examinations okay. so they are asking one more day Okay. instead of uh, two days they are asking one more day okay. in addition to that uh, some of the students they have studied in the iits mm. that is they are now they are studying mtech in our college mm. they want a full uh, scholarship that is 1000 uh, rupees 100 rupees no no, no fee <laughs> no fee because what they have studied in iits either okay. IIT, uh, iit madras or iit hyderabad they are asking that and also some students of uh, Uh, some other uh, right uh, lawyer cadre right ASC ST they are asking a full way for the okay. examination fees. This is the request from the student side. Okay. I am representing for that. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank a, you. I am thanking you all the NPTEL members. It is a very good opportunity for the students and all the faculty members to utilize their uh, benefits from the NPTEL, NPTEL team. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. there are six faculty here you know if i ask them three question papers all of them will run away <laughs> so <laughs> anyway i mean that's good feedback uh, but i think the september exams are much better that way i think the may exams tend to be very close to the university exams we try our best to manage we will we'll keep trying thank you hello yes. sir myself is dr mallikarjun angarge working for karnataka arts and science company Uh, actually, uh, we have joined in PTL in the last semester only. Only 45 students have been joined the course, but unfortunately, our students have not performed well. But anyway, that awareness regarding the 10 PTL uh, courses, actually, our college is located in a remote place, and uh, uh, just I asked Bharti Madam that around 300 colleges are affiliated to Gulbarga University, Kalburgi. It is in Karnataka state. So. what i would like to uh, ask you that uh, suppose uh, nptel team if you are ready to come to that area or at least uh, from the through the universities if you are trying to reach the traditional colleges of course i am seeing here almost all they are belongs to the engineering colleges uh, i am belongs to a traditional arts science commerce college but we have introduced this uh, course in the last semester and uh, four student have successfully completed the course among 40 uh, 43 Uh, so my intention is please uh, either you have to permit us to make an awareness camp in our college by calling all the traditional degree colleges those who are uh, at least uh, they should know what exactly these courses and uh, these are very important courses uh, we are very thankful to the nptel team you are taking lot of effort and uh, you have reduced the lot of gap and expert teacher you are bringing to the rural areas so this is actually an mhr division what i uh, learned it and uh, we are I'm very happy to say that uh, that IIT Mumbai has recognized our college as an a super center for running the four courses. We are running very successfully. That uh, around 700 students have passed very with high percentage like that. That is, but that is different. We are only with computer science uh, things are going on. But in generally, if you want to reach in all the subjects, this in uh, workshop is uh, so that courses are very very helpful. Uh, please either permit us to conduct uh, one organize one workshop there if, with your support 
then it is possible to reach all the rural area colleges. Thank you. Thank sure. You. Please, uh, please make a request to NPTEL at ITM. We will, uh, we will definitely consider it. Yes. I am Pradeep Kata from uh, Vail Tech High Tech Engineering College, SPOC. I have three queries. First one, exam dates are fine. Ex all exams are falling on Sundays. Mm. It's uh, very much uh, uh, helpful to students. But exam timings, 2 to 5, it's odd timing. So can you change it to 10 to 1? It will be useful. Okay. Because after 5 o'clock, girl students reaching from uh, last time, TCS Karapakam is a exam center. Mm. Reaching back to ho home, really, they took two hours and the traffic, uh, 8 o'clock they reach home, there was, so n next time uh, uh, girl students may not come across to write such exams. <laughs> so 10 to 1 is uh, my suggestion. And second one, as Pondicherry College uh, Madam told, Excel sheet, uh, date of birth uh, format is not a DDMMYYY, it's a MMDDYYYY. Month, date, and uh, year. So students, obviously, if we ask uh, date of birth, they will write in a date, month, year format. Once I do that, uh, in the scholarship list, their name won't come. It won't match. That that's first thing. And um, <laughs> and okay, sure. And Excel sheet. One more thing. Uh, let us take example. Language and mind is a course name. If I type language and mind in capital letters and upload the Excel sheet, it shows a row, row number 13 error. <laughs> because as in the Excel, what courses they have given, exactly I have to copy and paste. If I give capitals or a small letter, it won't take. I have to copy and paste every time. So little uh, feasibility <laughs> should be sure. given for these two things. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Yes. Ha hello, sir. Yeah, just uh, a remark about the exam time. So 2 to 5, we, we, we uh, came to after a lot of thought because some people travel from, say, Pondicherry to Chennai sometime to write the exam. So it's harder for them if they do 10 a.m. in the morning. So 2 to 5, I think in this day and age, 5 p.m. is not too late. But you're saying, okay, so maybe from there all the way to Avadi, they have to go back. So we'll look at it. And see. Yes. Uh, myself, Ganesh Prabhu uh, from Coimbatore, Sri Krishna College of Technology, sir. Uh, we had a great experience uh, last semester. We started with last semester only. I mean, uh, from January 2016. And for SPOC, for mentor, to settle down with the responsibility, it takes some time for me. Uh, so uh, we are not in the table, actually. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm pointing out. Uh, but uh, definitely in the next coming, we hope uh, we will have a topper. Uh, we try for a topper. Great. And another thing is uh, the timing and all I will accept. Uh, exam timing, OK. Um, uh, day, uh, especially day Sunday is okay, but uh, we can uh, plan for uh, December month or May month. Uh, totally that month will be a vacation month for the student. So uh, when we have a, a two couple of days, uh, optional days for during that month in a semester wise, it is very useful for them to sit and study before exam. Because uh, other than that, they will having a lot of commitment. In our, in our institution, we are having an uh, internal competence for 40 marks. So it is uh, very well dumped, the students are. So hopefully if we have a, in these two months, they are in vacation, they can utilize properly and they can get good marks also. Uh, other than the timing and everything, it is good. Okay. And uh, another one more thing, uh, 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 <laughs> from the student point of view, uh, uh, when are we say it is uh, free, of, uh, free for learning and we will give the space for learning everything. NPTEL is doing great thing. Free for uh, taking a course in a free is a very great thing. Uh, but uh, while they come for a examination, while they uh, approaching for the examination, thousand rupees, <laughs> thousand two hundred, <laughs> like they are uh, they are talking, they are discussing like that. So, uh, if possible, uh, we can reduce reduce to <laughs> some other. Uh, we can reduce from their point of view. I am talking, sir. So sure. they feel yeah. little huge amount. Everything is free, but for examination, that's why they are not taking up the examination. So uh, this po two point I want to convey to you. Sure. If possible, please <laughs> do a favor for the students. Sure. And uh, really appreciating for the NPTEL team. Uh, uh, when I am studying, I am not having this facility. <laughs> I feel now uh, uh, very bad. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Hello. 
Uh, this is Rajesh from Pragati Engineering College, Kakinada. Sir, I have two requests. One is uh, after the course examinations are done, uh, some Google Docs have been being created to uh, showcase the evaluation criteria of each subject. So that also not, uh, to give the track of uh, when the certificates are being uh, uh, released and when the marks are being shown. All that uh, procedure is fine, but uh, the evaluation criteria is changing from subject to subject, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. So that has to be uh, informed to the students before the start or at, the, at least in the first week. So that if they miss one or two assignments, they don't feel that uh, course is gone or subject is uh, gone. So better to be informed earlier. And second thing is regarding the active status for the colleges. Uh, you have been appreciating the SPOC in the, in the form of a certificate. But uh, if it is possible to uh, give a certificate in the name of the college also, so and that if they certificate it, to the college, to the, yeah, instead of uh, appreciation to the name of the person, okay. anyway, SPOC requires a certificate. In addition to that, if uh, college give, uh, has been given with a certificate, so that it can be shown as a achievement of the college okay. also. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So one thing that nobody says is, you know, when about feedback for you know the kind of teaching what kind of lectures are good, what kind of lectures, so I guess that is universally good, you're all very happy, you have no feedback on uh, this can be done, that can be done, uh, which, is, which is nice to see, but also all these processes, I mean, we are, we are processing, I mean, we, are, we are noting it down, some of these processes are hard for us to change, hopefully you'll understand, so dates for the exam and all that, if we have exam in December, our next run of courses start in January, it's, it's more or less impossible for us to get back into shape. So, and then also December, there are several universities which have exams in December, you just look across the country, you'll see. So, it's very hard to change some of these things, we'll try our best, please, please, please be understanding of that, Other, whatever we can change, we'll definitely change. Yes. I am Pradeep Kumar from V18 University Chennai campus. So, uh, as you asked, we are uh, this this year onwards, last year onwards, we introduced a new curriculum. So, in that curriculum, we have two credits for the MOOC. Okay. So, the students can go register elsewhere. They with bring the certificate, they get the two credits. Hmm. But the demand is 30 hours uh, lecture. But okay. here you mentioned as 20 hours as two credits. Okay. But our requirement is 30 hours uh, two credits. We also have a 30 hours version. Yeah. It's so obvious. So obviously you can have that also and also we uh, faculty members have a performance incentive. Mm -hmm. So we have to have innovative teaching methods. That means uh, for uh, what kind of innovative methods you follow this, um, this year for getting your uh, incentive. So usually what we do is, what I do personally is I just enroll for a course. So far I never seen any Python course, even I have requested also in the request form that we need a Python course. I mean uh, actually uh, Madhavan sir is taking now. So I am going to handle Python course this semester along with my 60 <laughs> students. So I ask every one of us to enroll uh, and we have a good participation. Great. So Great. in that context, I, I have some innovative uh, things. Okay. So thank you sir. So and uh, one more uh, uh, query is, uh, since you announced the course on 1st June that you can enroll, some of our students have already in the process of enrolling. Now the mentors are giving their names now only. So we are going to give the mentors list to you. But uh, shall the already enrolled students, can they be enrolled under their mentor? Yeah, yeah. Students it can go possible. to their uh, profile progress page and progress or mentor page. There will be a mentor tab that will come. They can pick a mentor anytime. Okay, okay. No Thank you, sir. They can also remove the mentor anytime. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Anvicharian, uh, Spark, Valleyme uh, Engineering College, SRM Nagar. In our college, uh, we have started in the last July 2015 to uh, for the, up to this. Uh, for July 2015 to October, uh, our college secured five ranks, top, uh, five toppers. And then for this time, March course, uh, I think nine toppers in March course. Nine toppers. Uh, nine okay. toppers. Yeah. And then uh, two in April course. So okay. totally 11 toppers uh, from okay. our college. Good. So in what I am, we, are, we are following the online course certification online. We give full freedom to the students uh, to learn the courses. In everywhere, uh, the accessibility is possible for students, uh, for hostel and Wi-Fi facilities there. In our college, uh, the digital library, the student easy to access. Uh. So for uh, preparation is uh, fully the, the student uh, interest. Uh, those who are securing the topper, we discuss with the toppers. The courses are very nice. Uh, the professors are explained uh, very well. Okay. And for scoring, scoring the low mark, uh, Somewhat the students told is uh, difficult to understand. Uh, Sometimes the preparation, the Anna University examination, they told. Uh, and then for uh, I'm also get the certificate from 
Spark received the certificate. One of the courses is physics of material. Oh, okay. I secured 61 mark, but difficult to score because the assignment only 50% from assignment. And most of the questions are standard questions already discussed with the sir. And this time we purchased the book written by Pradhaf Haridas sir. It's a very nice book and uh, <laughs> very good uh, feedback from our faculty members. And the faculty members also told that the lectures are very, very useful, sir. For particularly for introduction research in our college, 63 stu uh, staff and students are uh, totally enrolled. So this is a uh, credit uh, NPTEL. Okay. So mostly in any commission, in any, the, we have to represent uh, the NPTEL online courses, uh, most uh, totally 400 students are certified from our college, sir. So this is the, uh, with the help of uh, the NPTEL, we achieved uh, all these things, sir. And then for uh, uh, for last time, the place the, uh, I will discuss the wrong one, sir, for uploading and uh, submission of the answer. So okay. I will discuss with this. Answer. Okay, sure. Thank you very much, sir. And one more request is uh, for mentor, 50 students per mentor. Mm. So is it possible to reduce? Uh, no, reduce. 50 students per mentor. Oh, that's the uh, upper uh, limit. So you can have lesser than that, no problem. Lesser than, okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Hello, sir. I am Ratan Kumar from Arbadavid Institute of Technology. So, this uh, NPTEL online courses is very flexible. I had her kindly stick to that uh, flexibility policy. Don't restrict it because the academic schedule throughout the India is very difficult. Like some staff said, restrict it to one date and all, please don't do that okay. <laughs> <laughs> because opening and closing, closing time of colleges varies. So because of this flexibility only, la last time because of floods, many Chennai colleges could not participate in this thing. Mm. So I would request to maintain that, uh, uh, it's a personal request and NPTEL was like always whenever we get a new subject, we don't, uh, we are not able to buy books of a very high cost, we go for NPTEL notes, whether it is, uh, my first experience was wind energy conversion systems. It was IIT Kharagpur, uh, Dr. Banerjee, I suppose. I don't remember the name exactly. Still, I have that uh, nine videos, which I still I follow for that subject and all. Now it is Scilab, and I have downloaded this uh, Scilab uh, NPTEL video. So all these things are there, but the flexibility should al always be maintained. And dates, uh, uh, timings are comfortable, but dates we can have uh, it like uh, preferably like uh, in the month of November and December it will be better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think time-wise, maybe we can take uh, two or three more uh, we can take. After that, we'll uh, go off for lunch. Yes. I am Dr. Shushu Brahmaniam, Dhananshmi College of Engineering. Uh, first, I congratulate for the entire team. So my question is, uh, suppose is a engineering is a four years course. I talk about the engineering. So two years will be studying for the core related. The next two years is advanced oriented. It is a industry oriented. Uh, uh, I think that some of the project will be added means very useful for the <laughs> like projects. Oh, projects. You want, you want NPTEL to uh, NPTEL projects. projects. Oh, Possible okay. means added. You will online courses. Okay. Thank you. We'll work on. It. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. I am Madhu SPOC from Vardhaman College of Engineering, Hyderabad. Sir, uh, my request is. Uh, uh, many students are requ request, requesting uh, courses on softwares, uh, the software which are uh, now, nowadays uh, HFSS, Mat MATLAB, LabVIEW, mm -hmm. tools, lab. they are asking the tools, tools uh, courses. If possible, uh, <coughs> for, uh, sure some students are asking us embedded system courses. In EDX, EDX the embedded system shape the world their courses are like that. Those courses are very useful to enter the industries. Like that courses they are asking from the students. And uh, for uh, students, last time we faced a lot of problems uh, gathering the data. How, how many students are in, uh, registered, how many students are interested to register the exam. For that, to make the simplicity, we uh, designed a website in our college. College website, we are NPTEL local chapter is designed. In that, we are given complete information, our uh, department co coordinator names, and uh, if the student wants to register, uh, registration login, registration will be there. If you want to apply the scholarship, everything is there. 
uh, 10 hours courses. If, if possible, just uh, open that, sir. Hmm. I, I will show the everyone. You what the one? Yeah. Okay. What the man College of Engineering. Oh my God. So really, I mean. What the man? Just <laughs> type what the man. Uh, you can show. We are running out of time. So yeah, anyway, once so since you are asking, we'll do once. What the man? Did I get it right? I don't know. D H A M A N. Ha. Dot O R G. So you have a web page for your local chapter yes, yes, where you maintain everything. That. In the left side, NPTEL local chapter is there. Left. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yes. Here, uh, and local chapter NVOC notification, no, local chapter me, it will go to the local chapter website. Hmm. Uh, NVOC notification, click there, sir. In that, we are given complete. Uh, uh, mm. 10 hours courses, 20 hours courses. If you are student wants a course list, mm. uh, enrollment, scholarships, uh, everything will be there only. If okay. You can get that uh, complete information on that. And uh, okay. department coordinators, events, so, uh, subject mentors. We have to give the subject mentor list also, sir. Okay. That's why given there. Okay. Subject mentors and uh, videos. We are not linking to the MPTL videos there. Okay. Like, like that. Events just click the event, sir. Uh, we are having the uh, or NPL workshop on July 9th. Oh, yeah, July yeah, 9th. Yeah, July 9th, we are having the okay. NPL workshop. Okay. That's very nice. That's, that's Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we'll do one more and then we'll stop. Yeah, please. Good afternoon. This is Madhavan from SRM University, Ramapuram. Uh, basically, for the success and uh, for NPTEL, I was involved in initially with the NEC also, with starting okay. and then initiated a thing and then uh, with the now SRM. How to suc be successful for this NPTEL is, yeah, on, only the faculties have to take forward. Once the faculty have to take up, because they have to have the confidence that, yes, it's really a thing as such. So in uh, SRM group, we have, what we have done is, we have asked all the faculty to do it. There will be a, always a little opposition, 1,000 rupees and thing. Then we ask the management, whoever the top scorers, the management will refund the thing. Wow. <laughs> we have our eligibility, our above 75%, the management will refund the certification course. Just to give an encouragement for the faculty to do this. Okay. Because they should be the one who should say, yes, this course is really useful. Because one person cannot tell everyone. Another thing is, you can involve the placement officers each college just because it's basically in PTL what you link is it will link it only to the academic. You should involve the placement officers because they related which course at least the final years they can use it for the resume as such with certification they can encourage the final years. So with that involvement which course this okay this will be useful for your department placement or thing. So that involvement and linking with the placement officers the SPOC has to link uh, the, uh, have an interaction thing as such. Because they are always kept a NPTEL, okay, it is mainly library or the uh, academician will be involved, not the um, placement yes. officers. So that should be, because any student who wants to take, he just see what's the use. Okay, I've learned in my academic, so what's the gain? What's it going to benefit? Either higher studies or your career. So that importance only from the career development. Another thing is we are bringing, bringing from this semester is, this is as a, value added courses as such. We are having as a separate career development department. So they are giving some value added courses every year, every semester. So this one, uh, every department is taking one, selecting one of the course and that is being given as a value added course. In that value added course, instead of uh, one of the faculty will be playing across the uh, whole via assignment or whatever video courses and a faculty will be uh, giving a mentoring as such. So they will be acting as a mentor and as a guide for clearing the doubts as such. So that we uh, either on the Saturdays or in the after uh, college hours. So that instead of giving a separate value order course which is totally different, something which add an added value, combining you have to think as so that is the one thing we have to take it as such. So all these combination only then, then normally what happens is, I've seen in many colleges, they buy the LPTL address that is installed just in the library, in just installed. It is not streamed into the LAN network because a student going to the library is always, go to the library, go and see the NPTEL, it will be a thing. Okay, when it's streamed in the LAN, the college labs, whatever department labs, whatever thing, then you can encourage the students to take it up. 
So these type of things, involvement as such has to be done because everyone has to get involved. Only then it will be taken. Thank okay. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So maybe one last uh, thing with that we'll stop. Thank you. Hello. <coughs> yeah. I'm Chendil S.B. Osi from Sasuri Academy of Engineering, Coimbatore. Um, first thing is uh, you are uh, collecting uh, 1,250 for the programming subjects. So why don't you make it uh, the common fee for uh, like other subjects? Because uh, last time uh, five students registered for uh, algorithm uh, pro programming subject and they got less than uh, 10, uh, 10 percentage. Right. So they lost uh, money and uh, uh, yeah. certificates. So second thing is um, this time you are opening the portal for registration and uh, uh, payment. So if you uh, the SPOs you can view the details, register the students, tho those who registered in the particular uh, course as well as the students who registered uh, uh, online payment, uh, those who completed the online payment, if they are, we can able to see the details means it will be very beneficial. Okay. Third thing is um, after the course run, uh, if you provide is the question papers as well as the answer key. Uh, then the students can understand why they secured uh, below marks and uh, they can prepare for the next uh, course. Sure. Thank you. Sure. All these things are taken. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So. Last one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I am Shantakumari from Rajiv Gandhi College of Engineering and Technology, Pondicherry, and I thank NPTEL team for all their uh, works. So I have just uh, three suggestions. One is. Uh, for the student enrollment or the mentor selection. Usually the mentor selection is done via the mentor email ID. It was little bit, it was more confusing for the students to identify the list of mentors. Oh. Especially for uh, programming data stretches, we had at least 100 mentors. Okay. To search for their mentor email ID, it was a bit confusion. So it's better to publish their names along with the mentor email IDs. The second thing is that I thank uh, NPTEL for providing us a nice certificate for SPOCs and, and the mentors. But uh, these certificates, uh, they can serve their value if, if it can be used for academic performance index, APA schools. Mm -hmm. So you please give a suggestion to MHRD oh. so that that could be <laughs> useful for our career wise. And uh, the last suggestion is that the courses that you are introducing are uh, very nice and they are very good and uh, they are rich in their content. We also suggest to run courses that are literally with respect to the industry expectations. That could be helpful for the students to directly appear for a HR interview rather than once again going for a technical round. Okay. Those certifications. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think uh, thanks a lot. The last thing is, uh, I know we have a little bit uh, over time. Please bear with me. Uh, please, uh, this is, uh, uh, we are going to introduce the team behind the show. I think the people who are in the NPTEL office who do all this work, uh, all the appreciation that you said is directed towards them. I think, of course, the faculty are also there. Uh, so, Bharti will take some time in uh, introducing each one of them. Please to uh, get to know them. Thank you. Uh, so, I think many of you would have uh, seen names in emails, talk to us on phone calls or any other interactions. So, I would like you all, to, you know, to be able to put a face to that name today. Uh, we'd like to start introducing our team. We have uh, Arpita here, who is newly joined us. Deepa was with us. She must be a person that you all are familiar with. As she wrote in the group, uh, she actually moved on to another organization recently. So, Arpita is somebody who has joined us recently and she'll be working closely with the local chapters uh, as Deepa used to. Then we have uh, Kanupriya who has joined us now, who will be taking care of the portal activities here. Then we have Kamla with us, who is also working on the local, come up on stage. So we have, uh, she works basically on the uh, local chapters, organizing workshops and also the text transcriptions that, uh, that you will see on the portal. That is basically her effort. And uh, we are all, we have a lot of sub teams also, I will start introducing them. Uh, we have Nagarajan who uh, maintains our servers, does our infrastructure inside the office and uh, the hard disk copying he takes care of. Then we have uh, Muni Prasad and Gokul Shekhar who have joined us recently. So they will also be in this uh, particular team. 
Uh, we have the coding team that many of you are talking about. What you see as the NPTEL website, the NOC, the local chapter, and all the details within that, we have a coding team. Uh, Naveen uh, is not here with us today. He is also moving on to another organization. You might have seen some mails from him. He was the basic architect who's done a lot of the work, but he was ably assisted by Venkatesh. Come up. Govindrajan. Jason. Come up. No? Move on and, and Jeffrey Anto is a new joiner again who will be with them. We have our uh, designers, whose our brochures you see, the designs of many things that you see. We have a booklet which we have produced for the 93 courses. We'll show it to you. We'll probably be sending you all a copy of that. Uh, so the person there is Anushri, who does all the designs for us. And uh, she's assisted by Sujin. And uh, Sri Balaji, who's joined us recently, he's taking photographs, so you can finish that and take it. So, then uh, the local chapter team that you all would have heard again, names Krishnaveni was with us. Again, she is moving on, so she is not here today with us. Gayatri is here, who has been with us throughout on the local chapter front. She does the entire integration, and uh, many of you would have interacted her in various capacities. Go to the center. Mohana and Jayashree uh, take care of the basic uh, portal in the sense of uh, publishing of results and certificates and so on. So Mohana is not here again, but Jayashree is. So yeah, Pungulali and Jitakar are new joinees again with us who will now be working on the outreach of NPTEL to various colleges and also on the local chapter front with you people. We are trying to make the teams bigger because our volumes are increasing. So they are Pungureli and Jitakar. Uh, we have Anita with us, Maria with us, who also work on transcription and subtitling and the local chapters again. We have Gokul Shekhar, a new joinee, who has again joined us recently. He, Libin, who again help us in various tasks. And then we have uh, Jayanti with us who holds the fort together with putting all the question papers together. She does the coordination across institutes for getting it, seeing that it works on the TCS systems, works with TCS on that front. So she does that uh, kind of for the last four and she's been handling that completely. We have Lakshmi with us who you'd have again interacted. She uh, handles the portal issues, anything with students changing IDs, withdrawing from the course, enrolling to the course, doing all that stuff, putting content out there. That's uh, Lakshmi on the stage. Then we have a team of Surya, Madhu, and Krishna. Can you come on stage? Where is Krishna? Okay. So these are the hands without which our office will not run. They are the any to go to people that who will do anything for us, you know, right from A to Z, they are the people to go to. Then we have our uh, accounts team. I think they're busy settling all your TA accounts that you'll be getting after lunch. So we have uh, Ganapati Inba there and uh, Mr. Murli, who's now recently joined us to again help hold all the processes together. So I think you'll be meeting them when you get your uh, TA settled. And the most important, the videos that you all see that well, you all were appreciating about the video, audio, and so on. We have the entire team here. I know how many members are here. Mr. Kandan Krishnamurti heads the entire team. He's been with us since, I think, 99 or 2002. I don't know. He's been here since long, long ago. He's still with us. So he uh, kind of maintains the studios that we have here. He gives expert advice to the other people and so on. He heads a team under him. Uh, the team members are Benjamin, Sri Balaji again, Ram Kumar, Kartikeyan, Ravi Chandran, Gomati, Shivajay Prakash, Mohan Rangan, Kartik Bhupati. Okay, I left out Kartik. Kartik, come. So Karthi also helps us in various processes here. Sri Balaji, you'd want to join us, give the camera to, I don't know. Okay, we could have one nice photo at least. Yeah, we have a coordinators probably, I think we'd like a team photo also, which we never got last time. So we'd want the coordinators on stage, Professors Mangal, Professor Pratap, and Professor Andrew. So this is the IIT Madras NPTEL team that you see out here, who is doing all the work from the NPTEL office, IIT Madras. Sir, we want you on stage. Yeah, one, we'll do it by turns. So can you move 
Or maybe come in front. No, we might actually get the table. Can you come here? Okay. Yeah, just uh, get the, yeah. Um, just to give you some announcements, uh, uh, the lunch has come in. It's been arranged. It's in the same dining hall where you'll had refreshments. The tea is. I think it has been settled. It'll come to the same tables where you all did your registration. So after that, you can actually collect your tea amounts uh, from there. The entire team is again available to you. Please come back and talk to us regarding anything that you want. Don't forget the certificates you have to collect for the May exams. There are buses arranged for taking you all to the gate outside. We have two or three trips. The buses are waiting right out there. Yeah, yeah, I said that. Similarly, IIT Kanpur. Yeah, so similarly, IIT Kanpur, every of the uh, seven IITs and IIC has a similar such team. The team sizes may vary, but uh, this is the IIT Madras NPTEL office uh, team. So this is.